show your boy that chug love about to devour this whole jug going down smooth nah we don't stop watch to the end see that bottle drop sean p chug get your free subscription like and subscribe chug life edition going down smooth nah we don't stop watch to the end see that bottle drop What's going on, everybody? It's Sean P, and welcome back to Sean P Chugs, okay? And I'm back with another good chug, all right? Now, today, I am out and about, but I still had to get a chug in, all right? And today, I have the Sea Force Premium Artisan Water, and this is what I will be chugging on today. Now, this is naturally alkaline, okay? It has a pH of between 7.6 and 8.4, all right? And it says on the bottle that it is pure, powerful, and perfect okay so you know it's gonna be another good chug and this water is brought to you by none other than chuck Norris. okay you can see him right there on the bottle all right so you know this is some good stuff okay can't go wrong with your boy chuck Norris. so without further delay let me get to the chug let me go ahead and pop this bad boy open top that's for you all now let me get to the chug I was just about to tell you, old Bean. Oh, uh, now's the time to do it while the mics are hot. The children's these don't days. Don't waste any gold. We're not recording. You know, they're spoiled with that internet. Oh, yeah. You know? Did we have internet when I was a kid? No. No? They'll never know the pain of, like, hoping HBO show, shows Nell late at night just mm. so you can, like, rub out one Jody to that Foster's scene when she comes, yeah, when she comes to town, you know? Jodie Foster comes to town. One Jude. of my favorite Broadway plays. Yeah, it's it's a, not what it sounds like. It's more so a story of a boy becoming a man. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah. I was just watching a Jodie Foster movie before you came here. Which, <sighs> was, uh, which is was it your? No, I can guess it. Mm -hmm. Your favorite one, Elysium. No, 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 no. My favorite one's The Beaver. Elysium is in my top five. Hmm. This is a 13-year-old chipped-toothed Jodie Foster, and the little girl who lives down the lane showed up on the Joe Bob double feature. Oh, it's called week. Taxi. No, that's a, that's a delightful TV show. Taxi that Uber. That was Jodie Foster. That was Danny DeVito. Taxi Cabber. It was Danny DeVito who was running that taxi company. Taxi Cabber with Al Pacino. Taxi Cab Confessions, produced by Jodie Foster. But it was early was pacino yelling a lot yet or was he still doing calm shit i couldn't believe how many things got You're confessed on that show it was like on the people, confessions don't you know that the cameras are rolling it's mostly You're telling just, all the hbo paying audience your your darkest secrets it was mostly just people fucking in the back of the cab Mm, that was like the climax of every episode. Yeah. yeah, but then there'd be like some juicy stories for sure too. That was always like sweet when you were like, "Oh fuck yeah, it's late at night, no one's home." Like, and fucking tax cab confessions mm -hmm. on, it's automatic. But every once in a while, they'd slide one of those episodes past with like zero nudity in oh. it. That's what you always knew when the burly middle aged woman was the driver. She I was going like, to get yeah. the good stuff I out like of everybody. Too. Yeah. She was. She, she got people loose yeah, sexually. She, did. she, she had a real she, energy. She, she cut right to the bone right there. Yeah, she used to fuck. Who was your she favorite to to taxi cab confessions driver? Uh, email us at feedback at babyoneblow.com. We'll uh, post uh, the results on our social media. Mine's definitely <laughs> the uh, chick Don't lady. Don't bother emailing us. Yeah, I'll see if we can set up uh, one of those... Uh, what do they call those survey? Hey, yo, mm, oh, yeah. survey time. Yeah, you can do those on Instagram. Yeah. How many of you are here for the heavy set smoking broad? Yep. And how many of you are here for anybody else? Yeah, she's the only one I remembered, really. She's the only one that matters, bro. Yeah, for sure. And she's the only one we talk about here on Baby Oil and Blow. Well. Well, so let people know it's a show. It's a slip slappity bip bappity good time. Waka hey, huh? I'm sure. 
Yeah, I'm one half of your host. I am Matt O. Is the Bang Bus the uh, new version of Taxi Cab Confessions? Because if so, they've oh. just taken all of the nuance out of the art form. Took a real detour me, there. Yeah. My goodness. With me, as always, he is the mm-hmm. Real Sex 38 to my Real that Sex was a good one. 22. That was one of the ones with he all is. the naked old people. Nate Adams. Ahoy, hoy, everybody. Uh, as you can see, we've uh, made a made a decision here to pivot our uh, podcast focus from mm-hmm. action movies of the eighties and nineties to uh, just soft core uh, reoccurring television shows that mm-hmm. played on premium channels in the early nineties. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit more of a niche audience, yeah. maybe. But then again, sex sells, they say. So, oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, just every episode now we're going to be talking about an episode of Real Sex or maybe mm-hmm. a, a block of Taxi Cab Confessions. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe start a Patreon where we talk about a Silk Stockings episode. Oh. That's uh, not quite a premium cable, but, you know, it got kind of body. so... That's that's for the it's real silk hardcore stockings fans. Music. We're, we're just going to be talking about the eroticism of the silk stockings. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, a lot of gauzy cinematography Ooh, on that show. I would imagine. Yeah, I don't know. I never actually saw an episode. Supple. I was not allowed to watch silk stockings. Are you kidding me? Supple. I grew up in a religious household. Was that on the uh, Fox or no? That was the USA's. Yeah, right? that was USA Network because yeah. it was always uh, on after Raw. Yeah, it was advertised during pro yeah, wrestling. That's right. Yeah. What a time to be alive, man. It truly was. Yeah. Um, not yeah. a lot of entertainment options, so mm-hmm. you made do with what you had. Hey. What's up? Speaking of not a lot of entertainment options, oh. why don't we talk about one option that the people did have oh, wow. back in those times? That would be um, the uh, filmic output of Canon Films, I think is what we've been talking ding, about. Ding, 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 ding. Of whatever fucking month this is. Meh. Uh, yeah, this is... The month of meh. It's, uh, it's all started blurring together again. Um, yeah. Just, uh, what have I done since uh, the last time we got together here and talked about action movies that uh, maybe could be some sort of signpost for the uh, changing mm. of the calendar over to another... Nothing, nothing. It's You went to that redneck grind bar. Grind of a routine. I did go to a redneck bar. How one was night. that? It was, you know... It was nice. There was rednecks everywhere. Mm. Um, everyone, everyone was white in the entire bar, and there was a lot of old ladies dancing to country music cover band. Yeah, it was probably I got out of there after two drinks. It was it was probably the right time. Um, I, I could see things probably going south there if I would have stayed there. Yeah, you stay there the long enough, they try to you know initiate you or kick you out. Mm. <sighs> I wonder what the initiation would be like. I've seen Deliverance. Mm. Ooh, that sounds like a good time. Uh, this this week we're talking about another one. We mm-hmm. this is third week. Jeez, wow! How, it, how yeah. time flies when time's not really flying. It's one of the first months in a while, or uh, you know, I don't want to jinx it, but you know, it's three on, in a row, knock man. On wood, yeah. There's no sorts of uh, interruptions in our no. scheduling, so that's been good at the very <laughs> least. Um, I still can't shake that cough, but whichever. That's probably uh, that's that slow COVID they they, they say out there. Slow bit. Like everybody's, everybody's got a little bit of slow bit going is that on what in they their got? system there. I don't know. I'm hearing uh anymore. that word popping up again more and more, and I'm just like. All right, are we ready for another round? Is, is it here? I've seen a couple people get knocked out of work in the past few weeks, Ooh. and I'm just like, is it it's, seems to be going around again. Is it time for another round of booster shots? And then I'm gonna tell, who's going to refuse to take those? I'm gonna it's, tell, it's, it's exhausting. I'm telling people We're that... We're beyond uh, exhausted with it. I'm telling people Putin's doing this. He's going to invade here next, get everybody sick first. I Do you really think it's a possibility that somebody could do a ground invasion of the United States, though? That seems a little far-fetched to me, That If only there was some way to find out! Uh, rundown this week is brought to us by, we'll say that Kids in the Hall uh, season six that they dropped on Amazon Prime last weekend. It's the only thing I can remember doing in the past week is... Give me any little joy. Mostly it was just when the theme song hit and the, the opening credits did. And I was like, oh, this is a nice rush of dopamine from nostalgic memories. So mm. eight episodes. They're real short. Go check them out. Uh, you know, they hang dong. A lot of pain. It's, it's not on 
cable television anymore, so you can hang dung. A lot of pain do, so. to be seen. Enjoy, people. Uh, they were on basic, bro. They weren't even on cable. Mm, that shit aired on NBC. I think for like one half of a season, and then they moved them after uh, it was just like, oh, this SNL audience doesn't care about this. I swear I watched more than half a season. The rundown is of this week, I was uh, another Canon this. Films release. This is going to be 1985's Invasion USA. <laughs> this is, I think... I think one of their bigger, uh, or at least more uh, fondly remembered releases, mm. maybe. I think I think a lot of people consider this to be a legitimate movie, kind of, when you talk to them about it. Sold the most copies on VHS behind one other movie, um, Gone with the Wind. What about, like, Jurassic Park and shit? Nah. Okay. Invasion USA. <laughs> Second most successful film of all time, then. There you uh, have that's, it. That's another thing we're going to put down in our, uh, our our little facts right here. This is a film with a runtime of 107 minutes. Uh, budget of this film, $12 million. That's kind of kind of big for the time, yeah. for the studio, I think. They they blew up a lot of stuff. They believed movie. in this. Gross of this film, $17.5 million. But I, million. I don't think that's uh, counting all that VHS fucking oh, money. Because yeah. this had to have been... 85, this had to have been the earliest, earliest uh, era of, you know, being able to purchase VHSs. Yeah. It was like, they were like a hundred bucks a pop, like back in the day or something. Oh, before. yeah. What was it? What was the big famous one that was the first one where they were like, sold a bunch of them for like 20 just as a test. And it was like, oh, well, this is, this is the financial model. We should just sell every fucking movie for probably bucks. Then, E.T. Yeah. <clears throat> Hopefully. I think, no, I think famously. Spielberg didn't put that one. It was the opposite. He like refused because he was like, "I had it on my VHS. movies are precious." Yeah, but it was a big thing. I remember when it got released because yeah, yeah, it went so long. We were he was refusing to release it. So oh, that's right, a, a big deal again. Yeah, it was in like a, I think a fancy clamshell. Like it was like not the typical clamshell. It was to let you know like this is a premium release. It's a Spielberg movie. Jokes on him. Anybody with a decent VCR just used to tape shit off cable. Well, that anyways, that is why they acquiesced and just started selling these things for twenty bucks a pop instead of yeah. trying to be like, oh, our films are so precious. Fucking fools. Yeah, fucking dum dums. We're always gonna find a way to steal yeah. your shit. Just quit trying to stop us from stealing your shit. Yeah. Seventeen point five in the uh, theaters though. That's sort of a modest hit. In big the, hit. Big. <laughs> Big VHS boom, probably one of the first ones to happen. They yeah. were just like, holy shit, we can make money off this new thing called the video rental store. Criminy. Wow. Rotten Tomatoes has this thing at just a miserable 19%. Rotten Tomatoes can go another crime fuck right there itself. for sure. Audience has it at 51%, so they're much more. 5,100. 5,100%. Director of this film, fifty-one fifty percent, is uh, a veteran of the horror and action movie genres. This is Joseph Zito, him of uh, the Prowler, the Prowler, which is a great, great little uh, slasher film. I'm yeah, prowling. Uh, him of Friday the Thirteenth, the uh, final four, chapter, the final chapter. A lot of people have that as their uh, best Friday the Thirteenth movie. Is that the one time. with Corey Fieldman? It's a, it's the young uh, Corey Feldman. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we just at boobies out of his uh, bedroom window and making horror movie masks. We just had a Friday the Thirteenth. Did, did you watch any? We did no. Um, pretty sure I just uh, went to work and then. Got sad drunk afterwards. I don't yeah. even think that I noticed it was Friday the 13th until right. after the fact, really. Yeah. Life's all right. Yeah, yeah. Life's life's okay. Um, missing in action. He, uh, that, yeah. He did that one, I remember. Uh, another, we talked about another that. Another big favorite of yours, Red Scorpion. This, Ooh, this, this with guy, a big, sexy it. Dolph on the cover. That's right. A sexy fucking Dolph. He's wearing like a red shirt with no sleeves Just and black jeans and black Jack cowboy Hammer. boots. What a stud. Stars of this film, number one, Chuck Norris. Kind of gotten a like, weird string where we've been talking about a lot of Chuck Norris movies lately. I don't I think, think it's weird. weird yeah. Just giving the people what they want, really. Y'all been writing. 
We're, we're never really too hot on Chuck Norris movies. Just we just keep talking about clamoring it. for Chuck Norris. In this film, we're delivering. He's playing uh, CIA agent Matt Hunter, basically the yeah. baddest motherfucker on the planet Earth. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have talked about Chuck Norris before. Yeah, I think you name yourself Matt. It's bound to happen. Two of the Delta Force movies have we talked about? Or I, I don't. I know I, we've always talked about Delta Force Two. I don't know. We've, the confrontation. Well, we talked. Uh, we talked about like one or two Delta Forces mm-hmm. or one or two missing, missing actions. in actions. We've definitely I done don't one or two of those for sure. Uh, Silent Rage. Yes. We recently did. Uh, Code of Silence. Code of Silence. Like a Chicago cop movie. This is like her, one. his fourth, fifth, or yeah, sixth he's, time. He's, he's been around the block right here. Give him a little, <laughs> give him a little love right there. Oh, also, of course, he played himself in the movie Sidekicks, the movie where he trains Jonathan Brandis to fight karate because he's being bullied by other tweens, which I'm sure. Yeah, I've heard you mention is one of your wife's feel good favorites. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of forgot he played himself in that movie. Like I remembered him. Oh, I've never seen. I remembered him like uh, mentoring Jonathan Brandis, but I forgot the whole gimmick was just like this. There's a little boy who loves Chuck Norris, and then Chuck Norris comes into his life. The twist is at the end of the movie when he's the one that convinces Brandis to kill himself. It's a whole Tyler Durden it's, thing. Turns yeah. out he was Chuck yeah. Norris as well as uh, being Jonathan Brandis. Richard Lynch is in this movie playing a Soviet operative, Mikhail Rostov, who uh, uses Cuban Rasta. to invade the United States of America. Mikhail guy, Rasta! a lot of stuff. He's a real character acting uh, gem. He played uh, the character Kadar in The Barbarians, the movie that starred the Barbarian brothers, Peter mm-hmm. and David Paul. So R.I.P.D. My second favorite uh, film starring Peter and David Paul. Mm-hmm. Uh, he played Virgil Dobbs on season three, episode two of T.J. Hooker, Carnal Express. Yeah. Where, uh, Got it now. A girl, a uh, hooker and Stacy know, goes, goes missing, so she goes undercover as an exotic dancer at That's a club cool. that this girl applied That's to. That's pretty cool. Fucking Heather Locklear going undercover as a stripper. I will fucking watch that episode. It's like that movie we covered about that woman stripped copper to kill? that went undercover as a stripper. a good one, but she was no Heather Locklear. I don't know. She was hot. How much titty You're can right. you show on an episode of TJ Hooker? I wonder oh, how they got. oh, not much. Mm-hmm. That's a shame. She's probably wearing a one piece. Uh, also, he was uh, Johnny Turian in season three, episode 12 of The A-Team. <laughs> hot <laughs> Styles. <And> this one, <laughs> uh, <laughs> just when Templeton face peck. Was getting cozy yeah. with Hollywood model Rena. She's Thanks. snatched before his nose by Chicago crook Johnny Turian. That's a cool. But does name. not exactly appreciate being rescued. What? Sneaking aboard his yacht during a party she attends, Templeton gets her to confess being Johnny's brother Tony's widow, and he blackmails her to spy on fashion designer Jason Burnett so gangster Dubrio's company Revel Fashions can produce pirate copies but not what his hold over her is. So the team fakes designs by Murdoch. That's a lot of words. They kind of fell apart mm-hmm. and stopped making sentences yeah. at the end there. Right. That was that was all one episode of the A-Team? Jesus. I heard that episode had Dennis Farina on as a consultant to let oh, wow. them know how to real Chicago bad guy is. That's not a chi- how a Chicago cap would hold his gun. Are you kidding me? A Chicago bad guy? He's not going to get caught like that. Sausages. Uh, Alexander Zale is in this film as Nico, uh, who is Rosloff's Nico. right-hand commie. He's um, kind of the it's bald just, guy. It's just Nico. Nico Toscani. He's, oh, uh, a different Nico? Same Nico. Yeah. I think they're playing the same characters, different actors. It's all happening in the Steven Seagal universe. He's got hair so. like Seagal does, he does now. Have hair, well, like, he had hair like Seagal in his first two movies before they started giving him fake hair. That's alleged. Uh, he played Judge Holden on Matlock, reoccurring character there. Uh, he was a boon the doctor in the movie Showgirls, which was a boon for uh, teenage boners mm. back when I was yeah. a young man. Uh, I'm so excited. Also, he played the character Howard Miller on season five, episode three of The Incredible Hulk, veteran, oh. where David tries to stop a plot to assassinate a Vietnam hero running for office. But neither the target nor the assassin are exactly what they appear to be. I watched so much of that show as a kid. 
Yeah, I watched a lot of it too. I was just it was so a, into that ending theme song. Pretty pretty good show, I remember. Just uh, sitting and waiting for Lou Ferrigno to show up, and then he would for like two minutes and be like, "Oh, that was a good part." I was always you see what happened. That was a I really was good just part. Waiting for him to show up so that they could get that shit over with, so they could play that ending music. Yeah, ending music was very emotional. Um, Dale Berti is in this film as John Eagle. Oh, should we mention that Rostov, like, didn't we cover him? Wasn't he in Missing in Action? Oh, that's possible. I mm-hmm. think he's so a, I yeah. that one. He's yeah. at least like a two-timer. Yeah, get him. Uh, this guy, Dale Birdie, uh, playing John Eagle, is a hunter's friend who yeah. gets killed by the Soviets, leading to him vowing revenge on the Soviet Empire. Right. Uh, this guy played the old Indian in the Albert Finney werewolf movie, Wolfen. Mm. Which I think I might have seen once at some point. It's played, a wolfen! Uh, Chief Henry in season two, episode thirteen of Saved by the Bell, running Zach. When I get where, uh, in the morning, Zach wants to run the track meet. Uh, if he if he wants to, he better prepare his ancestry report. When a Samuel gonna look like which he killed to uh, help help from a, an an old Indian to do his ancestry reports. I don't know. Maybe they're saying he's got some Native American blood. It sounds like this guy played a lot of racist uh, stereotype Indian characters over the well, course of his was career. Was he not Native American himself? Oh, I'm sure that he was because basically every character he played is called like the Indian. Old Indian. Yeah. Cigar store Indian. Italian guy that passes as an Indian. Uh, Billy Drago is in this film, uh, briefly at least, as Mickey Seldman, a drug dealer who gets his dick shot off. Not to be confused with that idiot that was balling uh, Heikowitz's sister for a while, Billy Dragon. Yeah, Billy Dragon's different local That's guy. That's different. Uh, Billy Drago here. Um... We saw him as Ramon, I think you'll remember, in Delta Force 2, The Colombian Connection. Ramon. Uh, he was the character Papa Jupiter in the awesome Hills Have Eyes remake. Oh, I yeah, know we're he both was. Big fans of. He was the character John Bly on many episodes of The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. Oh, yeah. Which I'd really like to revisit. That one I haven't seen. I think a smattering of them when I was. It was it was on at weird times. I think like I never quite knew when that show was on when I was. Yeah, there. I caught it like later in reruns mm-hmm. after I finally that saw sounds, Army of Darkness delightful. and was like, oh, it's got to be Let's good. Get the hell out of here! Um, also, he played an unnamed character in season two, episode seventeen of Hardcastle and McCormick. You love that. You shit. don't hear the one that gets you. And this one, uh, what's the race about? Uh, when returning from New Mexico with twenty thousand dollars in racing winnings. McCormick and Hardcastle are waylaid by a bank robber and his girl. Yeah. yeah. Sounds pretty good. Sounds like a good app. Hell yeah. I like how much I'm learning about Hardcastle and McCormick just, just from you. Just gonna, just gonna, yeah. I feel like I, education. I feel like I know the show better than most. I mean, if you owned the Coyote one, you'd be getting in a lot of racing uh, situations too, I would imagine. Now I know the car is called the Coyote one. Uh, Melissa Prophet is in this film as. Dolly McGuire? Yeah, she should have been played by Whoopi Goldberg. I agree. Um, reportedly, they couldn't get her, though, because, you know, Whoopi, Whoopi was popping in 1985. That asking price went up. No, this is what led uh, fucking Chuck Norris to never work with Zito again. Oh, wow. He was like, we need to Demanded get... Demanded Whoopi? We need Whoopi. I can get her. And he's like, no, that's stupid. Let's get this chick. And I'm, I'm on Zito's side here. Chuck Norris couldn't get Whoopi. He could. He thought he could. The movie could have been. Uh, this character is million. a news reporter chick who's in the movie for absolutely Vital no reason to the movie. other than they needed a chick. They needed a shoehorn yeah. in a chick. Right. Uh, we saw her as a news reporter in Action Jackson. Mm-hmm. She played a couple of Guido bitches in uh, Goodfellas and Casino. Mm-hmm. Angie and Jennifer Santoro. Those are good ones. Great characters. Uh, also, she played the character Karen in season four, episode seventeen of Chips. New guy in town. Snaps to this one. There's a new rookie officer working with the CHP. A man is trying to avenge his brother's death by trying to kill Ponch and John. Sounds scary. Yeah. Also, she played Nancy Terrifying. Wilson, not the uh, famous woman, but a different character named that. In an awesome-looking horror movie called Fatal Games, which I've never seen. Uh, Synopsis of this movie, Fatal Games. A mad javelin thrower kills teenagers in the school. All promising athletes are executed in the most brutal way. Especially naked girls in dressing rooms or saunas. Mm. Fatal Games. Sounds like one I'm going to check out pretty soon. What, uh, What year is this? 
Uh, sometime back in the 80s, sometime back in the glory years of the 1980s. <clears throat> the VHS horror movie boom of the 1980s. I caught... Yeah, there's so many like weird movies I saw late at night mm-hmm. that I just have no idea the titles of them anymore. Thank you, USA's and Up they On could Night. could be like any of those movies. And Rhonda Shear. Yeah. Tagline of this film, America wasn't ready, but he was. Mm, motherfucker. Badass. <laughs> Badass. Plot, very simple. Just one sentence right here. A one-man army comes to the rescue of the United States when a spy attempts an invasion. He rescues the entire United States, Matt. You're welcome. Yeah, fucking. Let's get into fucking Reagan. Let's get into this welcome. fucking crazy movie, which might be the most uh, Ronald Reagan movie that ever Ronald Reagan in the era of Ronald Reagan. Uh, we'll yeah. do that in the next segment of our podcast, which we call Bullet Points, which is when we dig through our notes. We talk about all the things that jumped out at us as we were watching the film. Matt, what is your first bullet point when you pushed play on Invasion USA? Nate, you wouldn't be trying to sell old Earl Haffler Cubans in a Dominican rapper, no, would you? <laughs> no, I wouldn't be trying to do that. Um, but we're not talking about cigars. We're talking about human trafficking here, I think. Is, I is think so. Going on. <laughs> So, just a bunch of sad ass refugees out in a boat. Is yeah, how this thing uh, opens, yeah. and I don't really know exactly what's happening here because these people are seemingly trying to get to America. Yep. And I think they're Cuban refugees, mm-hmm. but I don't know. They're just drifting out in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, like they don't have a an engine on this boat. It doesn't mm-hmm. seem like they don't have a sail up. Yeah, seems like you'd at least put a sail up if you were trying to get somewhere. Right. I don't think these people know how to use boats. Is is what what was happening in this first scene here? No, they've just got a bunch of nice cars from like the fifties and sixties as taxi cabs. And they're gonna run out of parts to fix those cars sometime soon, though. They're, then One they're day. gonna get desperate. Then they're gonna be coming back to the old good old U.S. of A. Being mm-hmm. like, oh, send us some of your Kias, please. Never should have provinced cars. them. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, these people are laying around looking sad. I don't know what's happening, but, uh, I think it's just heat stroke. Yeah. You know, like a patrol boat with an American flag keeps coming and these, these starts coming. These people are like, Oh man, an American boat. And I'm like, yeah, yeah it's probably fucking ice, man. Yeah. They're coming to throw you in a detention center. What are you, what are you cheering about? Right Could here? be. Yeah. Some stupid kid yelling and waving like, Oh, Americans, Americans. I'm like, Kid, do you know what we do to immigrants trying to sneak their way into this country? It's yeah. not gonna be it's not gonna be pretty for you right here. And I don't know. Uh, the, the Americans pull up, and they're all very oddly silent. Mm-hmm. The captain starts grinning at all these brown yeah. people, and his grin is, I think, trying to be welcoming, but it looks very evil. It does. There's some menace behind his grin. I don't like this this situation. He's got a real burned up face. Too. I was wondering through it's most terrifying. of this movie, like, uh, is that like? Do this, is this the actor? Do they just get an actor who's burnt from head to toe? Or like, is this like makeup he was sitting in a chair makeup. for? Because it's like, he's like got burns all over his face and neck, but like, it's like subtle. It's not like Freddy Krueger or Deadpool. It's just like a kind of realistic looking, like this guy was in a fire at some yeah. point. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Don't know what's going on? Is this really a burned up guy or is this, this guy getting makeup on his face? Either way, this guy's been through some shit. Uh, he, uh, he addresses, everybody's quiet and just staring at each other until he says, Bienvenido a los Estados Unidos. Yep. Everybody starts cheering, just like, hell yeah, we're, they're going to get us on this boat with a real motor and take us into the U.S. Fucking things are going to be great. We're going to be able to uh, engage in commerce in a free market economy. Our, our lives are about to improve tenfold. Mm-hmm. He, he reaches out his hand and takes mm-hmm. an old man by the hand just to be like, hey, let me help you up on our boat here so you can get into a... Oh, man, he pulls out a gun and headshots the guy. Point blank range. Right in the head. Blows his fucking brains out. Right out. It's brutal Onto as hell. the boat. And then all those other fucking guys just whip out machine guns and just start machine yeah. gunning like all these fucking people on this boat. That fucking... It's a mass murder. This movie starts with a mass murder. On the M60? That guy was loving it. He's oh. fucking... That guy would have been shot for six more hours if he didn't run out of bullets. He had those Space Hog Steiger goggles on. Like, oh, yeah. It's... <sighs> Not, worrisome not very not very good vision going on worrisome here, but, uh, so yeah so those people are all dead dead as um, shit and then so they get down into like the bowels of their little boat here and pull up some 
guy dressed like Bellick from Indiana Jones, yeah. but they got him in handcuffs. Right. And then they take him over to the other boat. And I'm like, what's going on here? Are they just going to leave him on the boat with all these dead bodies? They're like, and, where is it, punto? Yeah, and so he's then like, he's like, uh... then down there. So they pull up some boards and then boats just loaded with cocaine. Oh, so much. I thought these were just like refugees trying to get to the United States. No, nay, nay. This was, this was some sort of cocaine smuggling rig. Which, if I was trying yeet, to smuggle yeet. cocaine, why would I have a bunch of refugees on the boat as well? That's just like, uh, hey, look at us. Look what's happening over here. Yeah. I just have a couple fishermen or something. Yeah. That's how you do it. Yeah. You just have like, oh, we're just a couple of guys out fishing. A couple of illegal refugees. fishermen. I don't really know up cocaine. what the plan here was or who all Doesn't these matter. people are or what their relationships are. It was all probably other. edited out. Maybe. Maybe some other cut of the movie explained this stuff Uh a little bit better, but uh, either way, we got a bunch of cocaine, and then we go straight to the title card. Invasion, Invasion USA. USA. It's got that cool, just like sort of 3D, shiny, metallic, mm-hmm. WWF 1980s logo looks good. aesthetic going on. It looks really good. About time for that to come back, like the shiny, three-dimensional yeah. metal logos, I think. I don't see why not. No, they've been trying it with the most recent Thor movies. So maybe yeah. That'll, maybe that'll catch on. I don't hopefully. know if people like those Thor movies. They're going back to 80s aesthetic and their fonts, at least. Yeah, hopefully this Speaking of, second one catches. How stoked are you about uh, Top Gun Maverick finally coming out this weekend? You, you got your tickets bought? I think Fandango's still going to honor my tickets from when I bought before the pandemic. Oh, no. Tom Cruise announced that he was pocketing all that money, and you need to uh, oh, that's, rebuy. That's fine. No, I suppose. No, he's earned it. He's fucking yeah. earned it for sure. He was the one who said, I'm not going to let this movie stream. Yeah, I don't know. In the weird like 12-minute long uh, preview I saw of it, it seemed like they were like, I was like, ooh, what's the equivalent to the homosexual beach volleyball scene. Yeah, they've, they've got one shoehorned yeah, in there. But it was just like people frolicking on the beach and there was like chicks there too. Like, hey, I'm yeah. the chick hanging out. And I was like, you can't have gay. chicks in the shirtless gay volleyball equivalent that's scene. Gay as Sorry, hell. Top Gun Maverick. Not gonna watch ya. Having chicks in the beach scene is gay. I I'm agree wholeheartedly. You, when Maverick. fucking Apollo and Rocky were running on the beach, did yeah. they jump into a hey, Adrian, Adrian. You should no. run with me. No, absolutely no, that's not. That's gay. She wouldn't have been able to keep up. Yeah. Her little lady uh. legs would have, she would have been a mile behind those fuckers. Oh, Do you God. see those horse thighs they had in those tiny little shorts? Those those were glistening oiled horse thighs? Juiced top notch athletes. Looks great. Uh, so after that little like uh, Real cold athletes. opening to this movie, we're going to get into the heart of the movie because uh-huh. Chuck Norris is on a fan boat. Oh, Bayou Chuck? Yeah, Bayou Chuck is in this next scene. He's got some long hair in this one, which is kind of not usual for Chuck Norris. He's blowing in the breeze. Yeah. I I just wrote, ooh, kind of forgot this whole swamp angle. I hadn't seen Mm -hmm. this one in a lot of years. Is this Chuck Norris's version of Hard Target, maybe? My question to you is here's Chuck Norris living on the swamp. Mm -hmm. What's his character's name? Uh, Matt Hunter. Do you think... This is where our good friend Steiger developed his character, Bayou Matt, off of? No, that was 100% just him playing the Nintendo game Bayou Billy. Yeah, I knew the answer to that. <laughs> but it's still great to hear it. But yeah, I was uh, I was just like, ooh, is he going to do some sort of uh, Seagal-esque, ill-advised uh, Cajun accent in this one? But once Norris he starts doesn't speaking, fuck he does not. No, he just no. still sounds Canadian, even though he's not Canadian. What he does have, though, is a uh, classic t- Canadian tuxedo going here. Mm-hmm. Great fucking outfit. Uh, light denim jeans, shirtless, light denim vest over that. This guy uh, loves denim. Might I say that maybe Scott Hall was taking some inspiration from this movie Ooh. when he invaded WCW infamously? Hey, yo. Wearing this exact fucking outfit. For real. Mm-hmm. His invasion of WCW, he dressed oh, like man. Chuck Norris in Invasion USA. Never put those fucking dots together. I tell you what, if I show up at Zombie Club this summer in like a vest with nothing underneath it, okay, yeah. you think that'll qualify as wearing a shirt? I feel like they'll let that slide. That just, they need to let anything slide, I think. is oh. that, that place is... Uh, oh. Can't be picky with its clientele. Oh. You know, we we got to make every dollar we can, as it turns out. Well, I'm doing it. Uh, FBI's here, uh, somewhere, this is the first time this is gonna happen here, where 
we are just seeing something happen in the day, and then randomly in the next scene, it's nighttime. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's, it's a theme. You're like, ooh, does this mean time has passed? Uh, if you think that every time it goes from day to night, time has passed, that would mean this cool. movie takes place over the span of like 12 months. So that's yeah. impossible. You just kind of got to forget that it keeps going from day right. to night in this movie. But, or just uh, assume it does. Yeah, the FBI is meeting with some normal cops, some Miami PD, I believe, yeah. about, about a boat that got found. Yeah. Uh, we learned that a, a, an industrious reporter lady was the first one who found the boat before uh, the cops real did. fiery lady. She's a real mouthy broad is what I wrote. Yeah. Yeah, fucking, yeah. They're like, what are you doing? You can't illegally board this boat. This is a crime scene. And she's like, uh, excuse me, I was covering a story, motherfuckers. Must be, motherfucker. Got a real April O'Neil vibe going on right here. Ooh. First Amendment, First Amendment. And they're like, ugh. Tell you right now, just let cops do their job, lady. She's no Judith Hogue. No, she's she's not a Judith Hogue. She's I'm a Hogue man. Not even a whoever <laughs> the hotter <laughs> one. Was I'm a Hogue. Was, Excuse me. Far better than the Judith what? Hogue. Much the much hotter April O'Neil from the uh, second and third, I believe. Yeah, she rolled over another third one. You so. and my wife are a they couple of keep her idiots because she was so hot that don't know what attractive she, is. She didn't look like she just uh, got pulled off the farm somewhere. I'm in, a hog man, deepest ban- darkest ban- Kentucky. Ban- like I'm Judith a hog Hogue did. man. Take so that wrong. chick out so into the wrong. sun and her freckles start You're connecting. So wrong. So, uh, yeah, so she's just going to be mouthy and not let cops do their job. Uh, she's a character now. You just learn, oh, wow, she's going to be a character. FBI gets on the boat, and it's just like, oh, fuck, we got dead bodies stacked up like cordwood. Christ, you hate seeing this. this. Is, no, this is going to be a lot of paperwork. Fucking, if McNulty was around, they'd probably make him be on this case now, just just to fuck with him. Especially if it was Whoever's season two, case, when he was with. on the fucking boat authority yeah, they, anyways. Yeah, they found all those fucking dead people on the oh, boat. This, man. Is a, this is a McNulty case right here. Dead hookers in the back of a trailer. Uh, next scene is daytime again, and Chuck Norris is wrestling a gator. Container. Yeah, He's he is. fucking knee deep in the mud with right. some old man trying to hog tie a gator. Yeah. Uh, this is another time I wrote, he hasn't spoken yet. If nope. he has a Steven Seagal Cajun accent, I'm going to lose it. Mm. I think they're building up a lot of uh, tension here. They're, they're making you wonder, like, Will he or is won't he trying he? to do a Cajun accent? Oh, my God, I hope so. Uh, next scene, I see it said there's a sleazy old man in a sleazy old motel full of hookers. Uh, this movie's all over the place. Who are these characters? But then I, I realized, oh, this is our burnt-up uh, fake captain from the opening of the movie. So, yeah. Okay, okay, we're back. Yeah. Back on track with whatever storyline this is going on here. I we only see him from the back face. for the longest time. He's walking down a hallway. I knew who he was hookers. immediately. They're all like, hey, what's going on? Stuff like Nate, that. Nate, they play the same bad guy theme uh, anytime the bad guys show a up. A sexy brown lady in a red dress Ooh, yeah. is just switchblading yeah. at one point in this uh, right. hotel room that he goes into. She's yeah. just leaning against the wall, playing with a switchblade. No, she had a butterfly, didn't <laughs> that she? That is a butterfly. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. I'm getting good Looking at that it this summer. Around, yeah. I told... Hey, Rock's got a guy. Yes, he, he did confirm that he does have a guy and will be getting us a butterfly knife. That's going to be sweet. Uh, allegedly. I, it's, if anybody, law enforcement officers are listening, uh, yeah. it, <clears throat> it's, this is all a joke. Yeah, just don't be a pussy. We'll get so, you one, too. Uh, so he's got the cocaine that he... Tore off that boat, and he's just like, you know, I'm going to sell all this cocaine to Billy yeah. Drago. With his hair slicked back, Billy Drago is going to be here. He's going to buy yeah. all this cocaine. <clears throat> Drago! So he's like, hey, butterfly knife chick. Yeah. Try some of this cocaine and see if it's real or whatever. And She's all like, man, I've been waiting mm-hmm. for somebody to ask me to try cocaine today. Yeah, then... Again. Him. Just like, oh, yeah, good cocaine, bad cocaine. We got this deal going. Oh, don't worry about it. Bam! Brostov or whatever the bad guy just Heath Ledger's her fucking head. Rostov. Rostov, when she's got the straw up her nose, fucking slams her face into the desk. She's got that straw jammed up into her brain. It looks really cool. Probably part of her nose bone jammed into her brain, too, I would imagine. That's deadly. You can kill somebody doing that. And he just grabs her by the fucking back of her fucking dress and chucks her out a fucking three-story window. Yeah, it's real. All in about, like, two seconds. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. uh, Rostov did have a phone call before, though. But what's he he saying on the phone call? Like, plot stuff. Nico was checking out guns. Drugs and guns. They traded these drugs for a whole bunch of guns and then he's like kidding i'm keeping the cocaine okay so uh 
He, he throws her out the window. Guns are and important. Billy Drago's like, what the fuck did you just do? I thought we were just doing a cocaine deal. And he's like, uh, sorry, you're dead too. He pulls out a gun and shoots yeah. Billy Drago's dick off. Mm-hmm. And then I think, uh, doesn't he just leave the cocaine lying around and some, like, black dude wanders in and finds it and is like, hell yeah. yeah but probably. A I... comedy bit right there. I don't know why he didn't yeah, keep the cocaine. I guess yeah. he doesn't care about cocaine. He's got his guns now. He's a cool dude. Yeah, he's a pretty cool guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Eagle Boat Rides is my next bullet point. Oh, yeah. Go back to John Eagle. He seems, I think he's trying to sell the gator they caught or something. He's like... Taking his fan boat yeah, around, that trying gator to sell that caught. gator. Yeah. Who wants all this gator meat? Then he's uh, I say, I say, I invites know. Chuck Norris to uh, eat some steamed frogs for yeah. dinner. <laughs> they got a real swamp life going, Steam, two of these guys right here. barbecue, yeah. grilled. Yeah, he's basically the Bubba Gump shrimp company of frogs, as it turns out. Yeah. Can make you a frog any way you want it. Chuck Norris finally lets us know if he's got an accent or not. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When he's like, frogs again? Yeah, <laughs> Doing this Chuck Norris accent. Yeah. Uh, so suddenly it's night again. Frogs. Uh, and there's some dork rowboating up to their swamp shack, which oh, yeah. I then wrote. I think this is the same swamp shack that Zartan lives in in the G.I. Joe comics. Sign it's, says, woo! Exactly the same as this fucking swamp Stay shack. Stay away, there. fool! Guy's creeping Stay around. Stay away, Joe! Um, it's sort of trying to build tension or whatever. Like, who's this guy? What's he creeping around for? The swamp. Takes okay. way too long. I don't really care. I wrote something better explode sooner. This movie's going to lose momentum. What was the question at hand? I was seeing in Swamp Shack. Just this old this dork in the suit. Uh-huh. Fucking uh-huh. Rowboats yeah. up to the Swamp Shack yeah. and is just creeping around inside. Oh, yeah, yeah, try yeah, to have yeah. like a little, make a little horror movie scene yeah. out of it for no reason. It's right. like, move it along, move it along, movie. Yeah. Suddenly, Chuck Norris springs out of nowhere out of the darkness and puts him in a chuck chokehold. Yep. And he just tells him right away. No, it's a chokehold. Doesn't even hear what he has to say. He's just like, I'm not interested. He's cool. So, yeah, this guy's trying to Colonel Troutman him into taking some sort of mission, as it turns out. And he's like, my, my war is over, is basically what he's saying. Yeah. Also, there's an armadillo just, like, randomly on the couch. It's pretty we get cool. a shot of it. Like, this is a fucking Werner Herzog movie or something. Yeah. Just a random... Sh- or. The original Dracula. We just cut to a close-up of an armadillo for no fucking reason. He's there. He yeah. lives with Chuck Norris. So the this roommates. little nerd in the suit's like, uh, hear me out. We believe that Rostov is in the country, man. Yeah. Chuck Norris lets him know. You should have let me kill him when I had the chance. Now he's your problem. Yeah. I'm like, you know, Chuck Norris gets results. And it's these pencil pushers in the suits yeah. that get in the way. You just let a guy kill a bad guy, and then the bad guy's dead. Problem solved. I've been saying it for weeks as we've been watching these canon movies. We're also setting up a theme here oh, yeah? for this movie where Matt Hunter, mm-hmm. he's not just a grade A ass kicker. Well, he is that, though, for he's, sure. He's always quick with a retort. Yeah, he's got some hard boiled fucking quips in this movie. That's for damn sure. Yeah. Um,. Next scene, Rostov's creeping in the bushes. Yep, ambassador in a foreign land. That's what I Outside wrote down. Some sort of, uh, I think it's just the big building that uh, Chuck Norris uh, spelunks around the outside of and missing right. in action. Yeah. It looks the same. There's some ambassadors or something. Rostov's just hiding in the bushes with a rocket launcher on his shoulder. Right. Like, just waiting for the right moment to rocket launch Ooh, these no one can uh, see this. fancy guys in suits. <laughs> And uh, he's getting ready to. They're drinking champagne right in front of a window. He's got the rocket launcher at he's the like, ready. He's about to it. rocket this launch is my through time. this. Suddenly, out of nowhere, somebody else has been creeping around in the bushes, too. It's Chuck what? Norris. Puts a gun to his head. And he says, not this time, Rostov. It's time to die. Yeah, it is. Like, oh, shit. We're in an awesome flashback right now is what's happening. Yeah. Chuck's going to blow him away, but thinks better of it. So it probably remembers his orders from the suits or whatever. Like, oh, mm. don't kill him. So he just knocks him out with, like, a fucking thrust kick. You got to. Suddenly, Rostov jolts awake. We we realize this was him dreaming. This is all yep. a dreamer scene. He's been having reoccurring nightmares about Chuck Norris ever since he had his run-in with him. Yeah. Uh, so he's like, you know what, fucking Nico? This dream is a premonition. Before we invade the USA... We got to kill Chuck Norris, man. We got to take him out first thing. Nico's already like, I don't know, man. We don't want to show our hand this early uh, killing Chuck Norris. Maybe we just invade the USA and then we're here to do a job. Yeah. But uh, Rostov's in full, like, unhinged Cobra Commander mode (laughs) where he is just like, no, my crazy plan's what we're going to do. 
So Nico Chocolate kind of established sky. himself as like the Destro of uh, their relationship right here is what's happening. I'd say so, for real. Yeah, fucking, he tells, he tells him, man, uh, as long as he's breathing, he's a threat. Do you, you want to make like one of those internet <sighs> memes about Chuck Norris that says that or whatever? Go ahead. It's right there. That's the truth. Right there in the movie, yeah. It's truthful. Next morning, we're at the Swamp Shack. It's uh, daytime again. Yeah. Chuck's just milling around on the front porch for a minute. Uh-huh. Then we see him just chainsawing a log for a while, mm-hmm. uh, just having a good time, doing some chainsawing. Suddenly, doing a little swamp work. Suddenly, dreadnoughts come out of the weeds yeah. on a fucking fan boat. There's they just sure a whole do. fucking crew of them. They're, They're fucking armed to the teeth, bro. Armed to the teeth, rocket launchers, machine guns. They're coming straight at the swamp shack. A little bit of everything. The armadillo that was in the living room earlier uh, is now just like... Hanging around outside while Chuck Norris machine her fucking uh, chainsaws yeah. logs. So, you know, not just an homage to Dracula. This is full on his pet. Yeah. That, that goes around with him everywhere. I don't know if you can train an armadillo. I'll take this movie's word for it. We get a lot you know, of shots uh, of him chainsawing and looking confused. We've got uh, armadillos in Illinois now. Oh, wow. It's uh, because of global warming or uh, people just dropping armadillos just like taking them on as pets and dropping them in the sewers like they do the alligators in New York? Not really sure. I think it's just, you know, animals just keep moving because they're getting run out of wherever they were living. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, they keep on moving, though. That's going to be a good excuse for us to just uh, round them up and murder them. So, I don't know. Yeah. Stay put, armadillos. That's that's all I'm saying. Yep. Not in my backyard. Don't come into Indiana. All this chainsaw is kind of masking the sound of the fan boats, so right. Chuck Norris doesn't know that he's getting rolled up on real or hot by a bunch know. of guys, or else you know, he would fucking know. Um, yeah, so I, so many rocket launchers. I just love this movie's commitment to rocket launchers already. Yep. And this is this is only like the second rocket launcher scene. There's many more rocket launcher scenes to come in this thing. So many more. I think maybe there's more rocket launchers in this movie than any other movie I've ever seen in my life, Yeah, quite frankly. I was, uh, you know, in that first scene where raw stuff's got a rocket launcher, I was like, oh, sweet. This guy's got a rocket launcher. He's really yeah, going to fuck up cool that embassy. And I was like, oh, he didn't even get to use it. <clears throat> and then when this guy mm-hmm. showed up with mm-hmm. the rocket launcher, I was like, I'm getting rocket are motherfuckers, blue balls right yeah, now. Are they just going to be like carrying one around the whole time because they only had budget to use it once? But they were like, well, let's just use it to make it seem impressive. Nope. They blow up a lot of stuff in this scene. They're getting ready to rock launch a swamp shack. Suddenly, John Eagle rolls up on his fan boat. He's like, well, yeah. what are you guys doing on your fan boats? So then they rocket launch him. Yep. Chuck Norris Straight to hell. hears him get rocket launched. So he dives into the swamp. After this, they just rocket launch the shit out of the swamp shack, blow yep. up that entire fucking thing. Into Armadillo the sky. goes fucking flying. That yep. guy's at least concussed. Mm-hmm. Lots of explosions going on right here. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so yeah. Actually, the armadillo gets up and runs away. Yeah, Chuck he Norris runs down the stairs. Away. So these guys did a really bad job of murdering everybody. Yeah, really they bad. couldn't even kill his buddy. All they the got was John Redcorn. Like fucking. Other than That's that, everybody it. else is alive. I don't even think they were there to kill John Redcorn. He was just. Yeah, collateral damage. Chuck just had a migraine that day. Next scene, they take off like, well, that did it. Just hilarious shot of Chuck Norris carrying fucking John's dead body back into the house, which is just like a complete bare bones four post frame. The only thing left here right now. I'm like, why are you carrying him back into the house? That was literally only exists as four fucking posts in the ground. It's 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 the same. It's essentially the same house. That Wayne carries Garth out of. It's exactly like that. <laughs> or like something out of a fucking Roadrunner cartoon. <laughs> just the image of this. Chuck Norris is pissed, though. Things just got personal. So he jumps on the fan, his fan boat, which mm-hmm. is sitting directly next to this exploded house. Just completely fine. Like yep. The fan boat's 100% in, yeah. intact. He, he can fan boat out of there. Um, so, yeah. Takes mm-hmm. off without the armadillo. No, you... He's got so much revenge on his mind right now. He doesn't even remember that he's got a pet armadillo. That's not going to die out in the swamp. But yeah. he does torch the rest of the shack. He, he, no signs of life left yeah. behind. He's he's going rogue now. No paper trails. Uh, next scene: bad guys are eating hot dogs on the beach. Mm-hmm. Everyone's just like at a nice like hot dog shack and like cutoffs or swimsuits or whatever, having a good time. Meanwhile, these Russian assholes are in like full on suits, head to toe. Just, yep. just got to be sweating their asses off, eating hot dogs and talking about how soft Americans are and how easy it's going to be to invade America. 
Yeah. Yep. In yep. their Russian accents, this is pretty conspicuous. I think somebody would have called the cops on them right now. Back in the 80s? Back in 1985, you, so? you see two Russian guys in full three-piece suits out on the beach eating hot dogs, talking about how easy it would be to invade the USA. It was your civic duty. You gotta call in, man. Didn't they have, like, songs back in the 60s? Like, if you're not turning in the reds, you're better off dead or something. And they certainly should have if they didn't. I imagine there was, like, short films before, like, uh, the movies in the little theater. You'd see, like, a Bugs Bunny cartoon. You'd see, like, a PSA about turning in anybody who was maybe a communist. Yeah. Uh, smash cut to now bitches. it's nighttime again. Mm -hmm. Some... some some teens are frolicking out in the ocean, a guy Ooh. and a girl. They're doing some canoodling, some real grab-assing going on here. I said to myself, mm -hmm. is this the scene where we'll get titty? <clears throat> not quite, not quite. It's a, she's, it wasn't. She's got a bikini on, it's yeah. a two-piece. He's got some seriously small uh, Speedos on, which sounds promising, but he wasn't really packing anything, no. so it was like... Don't really even got much of a bulge going on. What was the point of putting this guy in such small speedos? I think it was just also, they were nice speedos. Who's doing the dong casting here? Yeah. Like, uh, let's get somebody rocking a hog and throw him in those yeah. speedos, and then we got a scene. It's just like in that right show, that Minx show. Yeah, guy doesn't even have a European accent, so it really n makes no sense that no. he'd be wearing these things in the 1980s. Right. They're nice trunks, though. They are. They they do look pretty stylish. Uh, they see a flare come up from the dark waters, and they're like, what the fuck's that going on? Why did, why did a flare just shoot out of the ocean? Uh, either way, we're horny teens. Let's just go back to making out. And I'm mm -hmm. like, it's probably fucking military guys about to roll up on you and uh, crush you under their boot hills, teens. Good you chance. should get the fuck out of there. You should get the fuck out of there. Might want to roll. Uh-huh. Um. So, yeah. These two really make out for a long time before anything happens. Yeah. Like, Seemed like a good four minutes at least. Like, this is another, maybe like the second scene I noticed where I was like, well, this is just going on way too long. Like, this scene could have been an eighth of the, of the length of Sex what Sex sells, here. man. Suddenly, uh, fucking Nico, the main goon, just shows up next to him like Jason Voorhees and yep. wastes them with like a pretty cool, like, fully automatic pistol he's carrying around. Yep. Which seemed like some sort of, like, super weapon. I don't know. Is this, is this a real gun, this little pistol he has? I think so. I didn't uh, get a close look at what he was cool. carrying. but it's a every, cool fucking gun. Everything I remembered seemed pretty standard issue. So they're dead, and suddenly a bunch of just fucking, like, D-Day invasion boats roll up on the beach. Yeah. And a whole bunch of hooting and hollering assholes start pouring out of them. We got foreigners on yeah, U.S. Sir. soil. Oh, you hate to see it. There's got to be hundreds of them. Uh, they all run up on the beach past it. They fucking trample the bodies of these teens. That part was cool. They trample their portable TV that they're watching that Johnny Carson cool. on. You know, was fucking could have picked that up and sold that thing or something. Or just taken it portable with them TV to watch fucking Carson. In 1985. Uh, they get past the beach and see that just like dozens and dozens of trucks and vans and shit are waiting for them all lined up mm. uh gassed up ready to go mm -hmm. <clears throat> just like who did all this right is this just nico and rostov like how long have they just been stealing and lining up vehicles so that there's like 40 or so vehicles lined up running and gassed up waiting for all these invasion guys to get to them Nobody, nobody came along and questioned them what they were doing or whatever when this was all going on. Like local authorities or park rangers aren't like, "Hey, get all these trucks out of here." Hey, you guys got a real diehard with a vengeance truck convoy set up here. You guys you got any permits or something? Like you're blocking the entire access road to the public beach. I need uh, some answers here. Yeah, we're, we're gonna need to know what you're doing here. But they all pop in the trucks and peel the fuck out. And fucking main bad guy's like, 18 hours from now, America will be a different place. Ooh. Yeah, fucking scary. Scary shit right here. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, at Ray's Pizza, yeah. Chuck Norris is having a fucking slice of za. And a banquet meeting beer. Meeting with the lame government spook. Uh, it's an outdoor pizza counter type thing. And he tells him, I'll take the assignment. Yeah. But remember... I work alone. Ooh. It's a cool fucking thing to say, but... Yeah, I drink alone. The assignment is to fight off an invasion of the United States. Yeah, it doesn't seem you like, understand. It doesn't seem like the sort of sort of operation that you're going to need one lone wolf to take care of. It seems like maybe get the army involved in this or something, in Do my opinion. Do you want his help or not? Yeah, I'd, I'd like Chuck Norris on the team. I'm just saying, 
It seems like maybe you would uh, need wait, an army to team? fight off this. No, no, okay, no, yeah. no. He's the team. He's 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 lone he's lone he's wolf McQuaidin it through the rest of this right. movie. So uh, <clears throat> next scene, it's pronounced Matt Hunter. Government guys, they're investigating all of the invading ships mm-hmm. things that just got left up on the beaches, and they're like, "Oh, we see tracks of like forty, 40 year old fucking boats. trucks peeling out." One of them says, "This is big." That's a direct quote right there. Ooh. Ooh, this is big. You don't see something like this every day. He man. knows. Yeah, he's been on the department for a while. That's he right. Knows. That's right. Uh, who else has been around the block and knows whenever to show up McGuire. magically anytime something's happening? Obnoxious reporter girl. McGuire. Everyone's ignoring her because why is she even in this movie? But she's mouthy in the background like, hey, what's going on? Give me a quote. And they're all like, shut up. There's no reason for you to be in this movie. Oh, this chick's here again. She's like, uh, I'll figure out what's going on. Chuck Norris is over there. He probably knows. Tries to cross the police line. Mm. Like not by like causing a distraction or like pretending like she's somebody important or anything. She just tries to duck under the police line right next to cops. And they're like, no, get back over there. Don't do that. Not allowed to do yeah. that. I was like, pretty shitty reporter right here. April O'Neil would have found a way to sneak past that line. Oh, Judith Ho. You need to watch some Ninja Turtles cartoons or something. Probably. She had a sigh in her purse. She is a tough mother sucker. That Judith Ho. She's just carrying around a stolen sigh. It was fucking, I'll get it back. It was a found one, not stolen. He lost Sai! Um, so yeah, she's an idiot. I like that fucking Chuck Norris is just barely in the distance, kind of, Yeah, I don't know, staring it's into like the like Charles Bronson ocean. attending a funeral with somebody. Yeah. He's, he's just going to stand in the background and right. keep an eye on what's going on. Yeah. Next scene, it's Christmas in the bu- suburbs. In so, Hollis. Suddenly we've gone from everything happening on a beach to we're just in like a very yeah. dense, rural, single-family home Sub-arb. neighborhood cultist. In the Subarbs. Deal. That's right. Uh, hyper-residential right here. Yeah. It's Christmas time. We know that because everybody's putting up Christmas <laughs> lights. There's Christmas music playing. <laughs> it's hilarious because it's pitch black. Wake up, wake up. It's the middle of the <laughs> night, but like every <laughs> single person in this neighborhood is out in their yard <laughs> at like 9 o'clock at night. Everybody's either like playing catch outside yeah. or like putting up Christmas lights do. or something. It's in the in the fucking dead of night. Back when the world was a safe place, you didn't have to lock your doors, Nate. You didn't. Truck pulls up all aggressive, yeah. uh, right into the frame. The bad guys get out. They look around. They see teens making out, mm-hmm. families being together, little kids playing catch, and they're just disgusted. Yeah, they hate us for our freedom, Matt. That's what I've always said. Yeah, these foreigners they hate us because we're so free. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's his, his main guys like they make it so easy for us, don't they, Nico? Yeah, these, these people have gotten soft. They don't even know what yeah. it is to be hard nosed in Russian. No, if you were in Russia, they'd probably be like slapping a seal or wrestling a bear right now. We get some Good dumb chance. little girl up on a ladder just struggling to put the star on top of the Christmas tree outside. Some <laughs> real Cindy Lou Who yeah, bullshit. Cindy Lou Who bullshit. Nah. So uh, these guys are just like, well, let's start our invasion of the USA. Oh, yeah. Put on some badass welder's goggles. Pull out some rocket launchers, Matt. Yep. A whole bunch of rocket launchers. Yeah. And then they just start rocket launching the cul-de-sac. Yeah. And one of the coolest scenes I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. They blew up so many they houses. just found some neighborhood somewhere. That apparently the whole neighborhood had to get knocked down for some yeah. reason. Did you? F- I did can't imagine what the situation would have been. It was in Atlanta. They blow up literally every single house on this street with rocket launchers. The city was about to uh, demolish the suburb mm-hmm. to expand the international oh, yeah. airport. Gotta gotta push those brown people out so we can build some infrastructure. And Atlanta was like, "Fuck yeah, you can blow up these houses. Like that's cool as shit." Yeah. And now we were uh, gonna do it and pay for it. Now if, you can pay for it if you fly to Atlanta and go to the uh, the airport, Chuck Norris International Airport. If you go to the convention center, mm-hmm. this convention center right stands the where the suburb used to be. Yeah, blown up. So either way, um, they blew up a whole suburb. They blew up a whole suburb. Uh, I, I wrote. It's hilarious that their plan to invade the country. 
is to blow up one suburban neighborhood where nobody particularly important lives. It's a start. It's not like let's knock out the electricity or no. like uh, the 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 water plant. They're not going after any like uh fucking no structural things. We're not blowing up bridges. We're yeah, not no, taking. No. <laughs> we're let's just. Individually kill every American uh, from street to street, I guess, is their plan. They right had there. the opportunity to shoot it, and they did. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so it works. Yeah, we linger in the aftermath. Uh, things are burning. People are screaming. Little yeah. kids are running around looking for their parents. Yeah, so many people in the streets doing one, nothing. One mom's got some parachute pants, and she's running around pretty aimlessly. Yeah. Either way, it seems like a pretty traumatic experience to have your entire suburban cult sack rocket launched in the matter of seconds. These dudes, everything's burning. These dudes finish up and then just casually oh, yeah. drive off. They don't peel off or nothing. No, they're, just, they're, they're they're following the speed limits. Just yeah. uh, all right, on to the next neighborhood, I guess. The driver's like, got to be careful. Those guys are still standing back mm-hmm. there with rocket launchers. Mm-hmm. Just gonna keep it at about about ten mph. Disco, disco, go, go. Disco, disco, next scene go, go, go. Ladies, at some kind of community center. A bunch of brown people are dancing to brown people music. Yeah. Uh, a couple of real dorks are trying to get laid. Look, oh, check out those chicks over there by the snack table. Let's go yeah. talk to them, maybe. I don't know. Get it. So uh, this is just like a normal, just like neighborhood party going on until some cops roll up all slow mm. and menacing. Mm. I was like, oh, I see what's happening here. Brown people are getting together and probably got some noise complaints. Time yep. to break up this party. Oh, yeah. Instantly, one of the dorks is getting mouthy with the cops, and I was—I wrote down, just comply with what they want, man. Yeah. You comply, everything's going to be fine. Yeah, that's all you have to do. This is how people get shot. Yeah. If cops tells you do something, and you get all mouthy with you them. You just do it. You just do it. Just let, let them do their jobs, man. That's what I've been let saying. Let them do their jobs. That's what, what we've been saying. So the cops pull out shotguns and just start shotgunning everybody. Yes. Uh, there's one guy who's got curly hair and mirror shades, even though it's nighttime again. Yeah, it's a cool look, though. And he's like, he's loves shotgunning people, right. but then the other one's like an Asian guy, and he's like, enough, man, yeah. we gotta leave some witnesses, we got orders. And he's like, but I'm really good at shotgunning! Yeah, he's got crazy look on his eyes, but he, he stops shotgunning eventually. Yeah. And then one of the girls who's left alive just starts giving a Nancy Kerrigan, why? Yeah. Why? Reporter girl is there, as, as we noted, because yeah. she's just happens to be everywhere when anything happens in this movie i keep she's on the scene i like that like she's also unremarkable enough to where you're not oh, sure i'm always like is scene? that her again yeah, yeah just like and totally it, unremarkable looking brown hair medium build i, I was never sure i wrote or not. in so many of these scenes i think one of them was mcguire <laughs> you, you can see on her face though she's doing some acting she's kind yeah. of putting it together like wait a second I don't think those guys were real cops. No. I think those were fake cops and something's going on here. Yeah. We see what happens in the next scene because the real cops do roll up, see what's happening. These people start throwing rocks at him, just chucking rocks. At him. Like, fuck you, you fucking cops, shotgunning mm. everybody we know and love. And I'm like, oh, those were fake communist guys. Even though one of them was just like an American guy and the other guy was an Asian guy. And these are all supposed to be Cuban guerrillas. <laughs> like... It's either way. It's our fucking Cuban guerrillas posing as Americans to so mistrust within the community. Yeah, we're gonna start a race war, just like fucking old Charles Manson race warned war. us all about. Yeah, he he tried to tell us it was coming. Chuck Norris is in the ghetto in the next scene. He's rolling slowly down a bad neighborhood block in his sweet ass pickup truck. Yeah, hookers are yelling at him like, "What the fuck are you looking at, Chuck Norris?" Some nice looking hookers too. Just like every four feet, some of them are stacked. There's another comical little like scene of just like some sort of crazy street thing happening, like some violence or some hookers or some drugs or something. And them all just like turning and punching yeah. his truck as he drives by. <laughs> just this fucking hilarious 1980s shit where movies just led you to believe that if you go into a city. Every five feet, something illegal is happening, yeah. and everyone is out of their mind on drugs everywhere, and it's just a miserable cesspool. We need to raise the cities. Chuck's hard, though. He's like, I'm just going to keep it at mm-hmm. 10 and 2. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, he's, he's got his stone-faced Chuck Norris thing going on. Makes his way into a real sleazy bar with some real sleazy, topless dancers. Yep. Finally, we get our... Uh, just gratuitous titties in this movie, but mm. also this scene is shot so fucking dark that you could barely tell what's going on. Yeah, you could just make out the titties in the background. 
instantly a guy gets in his face and is like, hey, you're not wanted around these parts. Take off or whatever. What an idiot. Yeah, this is Chuck Norris. You can't just tell him to leave. No. He's going to fucking do something hard and badass to you, which he does because he just puts his hand around the other guy's hand as he's holding a beer bottle and squeezes till the beer bottle breaks and all the glass goes in that guy's hand. It's a cool fucking move. It's a cool fucking move. The guy has nothing else to say. He's just like, all right, my mistake. Go, this, go about your day, Chuck I didn't want to do any of that. He goes and sits at the bar next to some dude, and he's like, hey, where's Rostov, man? And the guy's just like, oh, fucking, you know, fucking can't tell you what's going on with Rostov. It's the owner of the bar. Chuck Norris tells him, you owe me for saving your ass in South America. Ooh. This guy's doing some cool shit. He's had a cool life. Yeah. This Matt Hunter guy. Yeah, hell yeah. Guy's like, all right, all right, fucking, you're right. I remember South America. Some crazy shit went down, bro. You pulled my ass out of the fire. Uh, He's like, I saw some wackadoos at yeah. the King Cobra last night. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I ain't saying it's them, but, uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's them. probably them. You should go over there. So then there's a cool exchange when he's leaving where uh, the guy says, see you in hell. Chuck Norris says, send me a postcard. Awesome. These guys, these guys talk to each other like this all the time. Yeah. Cool. Cool as hell. Hell yeah. Uh, next scene, the reporter girl's arguing with the cops again. She lays out what the bad guy's plan is through she, some clunky uh, exposition. I'm going to tell you right now, Nate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If she were like a Judith Hogue level reporter, sure, yeah. cops would have let her right That's there. That's right. She, she would have been probably wearing a jumpsuit right now, and they'd been like, oh, she looks official. Which no, I'm just kidding. Cops hated it. Judith Hogue. She's like, they're turning people against each other. My they're, own son. And they're baby. turning them against authority. And then one door a cop says, Miss O'Neill. I can't believe this is happening here in, in the U.S. of A. The good in old the U.S. Good of A. Old yeah. Maybe US if we didn't a. have open borders like the libtards want, yeah. a bunch of the hundreds of Cuban gorillas wouldn't be able just to just roll into the country and do whatever yeah. they want, Matt. Maybe we should close the borders. Yeah, close the borders of Canada. You know who's right? not going to tell you that? Joe Biden. Close the borders of Canada. Here's what they're not telling you. That fucking uh, free health care they got mm-hmm, up there, mm-hmm. that's not working out. You know how long you got to wait at those places? Probably like... You're going to die. You're dead. Yeah. It's like, probably just a bunch of cartoon skeleton, so like all these, skeletons waiting in a line. All imagine. these people are coming Dusty, from to America from Canada. in the waiting room. Just to get our you know medical... God, Joe Biden loves immigrants so much, and he, he lets so many in the country. It makes me yeah. so mad. Yeah, I think he just he doesn't really realize what's going on. Next scene, the bad guys are just hanging out at a beach resort. Uh huh. I don't know what's happening. They They're worked like drinking hard. Drinking frescoes. Time to relax. And yeah. hanging out with like normal folk. They just rocket launched a neighborhood. Right. They're like international terrorists. Like, where are they? Where is this happening? Doesn't matter. They're just at a beach resort hanging out. I don't. I don't know. It's Nico walks up to the guy with thick Coke bottle glasses, mm-hmm. and he's like, "I got you Christmas present." I don't. I don't. I don't know what got established in this scene because I was just incredulous about like, why was, aren't they hunkered down somewhere with like their guns and stuff? That was How the do they have scene. time to hang out at the beach? It was the whole scene was just Nico handing the guy with glasses a bag, going, mm-hmm. "I got you Christmas present." Next scene, there's a rip to shit. Brown dude hanging yeah. outside of another sleazy bar with another guy who's polishing his like fancy car. Uh-huh. And I wrote, uh, well, this movie just keeps going from night to day with zero regard for timelines or scene to scene continuity. It's night. Now. It's the last three in a row. Yeah, it's gone Days from go night to fast. day to night. Like apparently this is six months into the invasion right now. Right. And still the US government hasn't responded in any way other than telling Chuck Norris to take care of it. Yeah. You know. Uh, Gotta so, start somewhere. Uh, yeah, uh, we get some gratuitous boobies from dancing girls in this bar. Yeah, maybe, can... maybe this is the bar. Maybe we didn't even get them in the previous bar. I don't. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you can see them here. Yeah, they're dark, here. but you uh-huh. can see them. Uh, so I'm like, are these new bad guys? I don't even know who I'm supposed to be looking at right, right now. Right, I'm not following the plots of any. I assume anybody who's brown has to be a bad guy. Right. But I don't think these guys have been in the movie. Up I don't to this think point. so either. We've already established our bad guys and what they're doing, so I don't know. They pissed off the guys with the nice car, though. That's yeah, all that's we need true. to know. Uh, some backroom canoodling happens. New bad guys suddenly in, like, the back room of the bar throwing a blonde woman around. Yeah, he's like, because he goes into the bar, it's like him and two other dudes, and the other two dudes are like, bro, we're here to do the mission of taking over America. Mm-hmm. And the main guy with the mustache is like, not till I get my yeah, dick wet I'm just first. Here to slap this blonde woman. Around, yeah, I'm gonna get stanky on my hang down. See you, 
dork Slater. Well, there's no, he's not going to because Chuck Norris is just in his room with a Bowie knife. Right. Ready to stab the knife through his hand yeah. and into the desk so he can't move anywhere. He's just wearing cool gloves and waiting in yeah. the shadows. He's just like, where's Rostov? And the guy's like, oh, man, I got stabbed in the fucking hand. That's the hand I just told the hooker not to touch. Mm-hmm. Another guy comes in, he's going to stop the shit, and Chuck Norris just points at him. He's the guy from the street. Guy stops instantly yeah. in his tracks when he gets pointed at by Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris hits him with the line, you come back in here, I'm going to hit, hit you with, you so, with many so many rights, rights. you're yeah. going to beg for a left. Yeah. That's a cool <laughs> fucking dads line. dads thought that was cool as hell when they heard that line it is in 1985. Cool. I've had fucking dads were telling their kids that line for oh, like yeah. the next 10 years at least. Uh, so he leaves... Comes back with the rip to shit goon. Rip to shit goon just gets fucking sidekicked through the fucking door jam in like two seconds. Yep. Chuck Norris is not fucking around right here. No. So he does that cool thing where he takes a grenade out, pulls the pin on it, and then puts it in the bad guy's hand and is like, yep. oh, you got a fucking live grenade to deal with now. What's up? What's up, bro? I'm crazy. I don't care who lives and who dies. Yeah. But he does say, if you survive this... Mm-hmm. Tell Rostov, it's, it's time, time to, to die. die. So he leaves. I guess maybe get some information out of him or something. I don't remember him telling him anything. Um, he has to have told him the bad thing that's going down at the shopping mall. Because And the next scene, Chuck Norris just knows to show up at the shopping mall. Yeah, he does say something like, I need, you know, like, where's the next attack going to be or some shit mm-hmm. like that. But I don't think old dude ever really divulges. No, but, not that I remember. I missed it. I don't know. Um, Com- we get a little comedy point here where yeah. after Chuck Norris leaves, the guy panics and throws the grenade out the window mm-hmm. directly down into his fancy car that he just got done polishing, Matt. That's not his car. He explodes the big car. That's Whose the, car is it? That's the car that he got into the fight with. He and his boys peel into the parking lot and piss off tall guy and muscle guy who own that car and they're washing it. These are all different guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because these three bad guys so many run over the wash bucket. characters bucket. that have nothing to do with the rest of the movie all introduced in the same 45 second scene. That's why tall guy and muscle guy are like, no, fuck it, we're going to go fuck these guys up. And that's why tall guy barges into the room and he's like, I'm going to beat you up. And Chuck Norris tall is guy like, was just his goon. No, no, no. That guy wanted was making to, f- to polish his car for him. No, he wanted to fuck up mustache guy for running over his wash bucket. Oh, there was and Chuck so Norris much more is like, stuff going on this guy's there, busy. And there needed to be Get the, the fuck out of here. Yeah. Which is why it was so great. Because Chuck Norris is like, I work alone. This is my war. You will get killed. Either way, we got to go to the shopping mall scene next, yeah. which is one of the great, great scenes of the 1980s cinema. Everybody always wants to talk about the Blues Brothers in a oh, shopping mall. Nothing. Fuck that. It's got nothing on the fucking Invasion USA shopping mall scene. We start off by following around some toe-headed little fuck in a crowded little mall. shithead. There's people everywhere. Shithead Christmas kid. decorations everywhere. The kid starts eyeballing Marty McFly's fucking Toyota truck. No, this was part, a Nissan in this part, one. Either way. Some sort of a... I don't remember Marty's truck. Some sort of rice burning four by red, four white, and blue, instead sir. Instead of an American-made truck. Uh, it's in a little display in the middle of uh, the shopping mall like they used to do back when shopping malls were a thing. Kind of truck's a four-banger. Uh, some mall security guard doesn't like the way he's chewing gum, so he's eyeballing him. Yeah. He knows this little shit's up to something, which hey he is. Hey, kid, I'm watching you. He thro- sh- throws his gum at the windshield of the fucking car. Hey, kid, I knew it. He tells him, you little brat. Hey, get over here, kid. This is, this is not important to the movie whatsoever. Nope. It's just a little color, some establishing color to let us know we're in a shopping mall right now. What is important is a guy in a gray suit is carrying a suspicious package and the music starts telling us that something's very suspicious about this glasses guy from the beach scene carrying the bag that nico brought him and says i got you this for christmas bomb in this bag is what's going on uh meanwhile some guy and a lady are shopping for perfume losers yeah fucking dorks uh and uh they see old glasses guy set down the bomb in a bag yeah. and walk away. And the guy's like, Mom, sir, oh, you forgot your bag. Bam. Sir. Yeah. Glasses guy just starts trying to walk faster. Yeah. This guy's not taking the hint. He keeps walking after him faster and faster. Eventually, they're just in a full-on sprint. This right. guy's chasing this guy like, your bag, your bag. Even security is, stepped in now yeah. and was like, why are you running, bro? In post-9-11 world, I feel like we've got much more... Uh, awareness about this yeah. somebody leaves a bag somewhere yeah. 
It's probably fucking anthrax. Don't go yeah, grabbing don't that bag it. and chasing people around with yeah. it, you dumb idiot. You just yell like, unbanned bag! Mm-mm. So eventually it gets so desperate, this guy won't stop chasing him, that all the terrorists in the place got to reveal themselves. Yeah. They just turn around and just start machine gunning and rocket launching right. everybody. Right. The bomb blows up like yeah. instantaneously. It's not much of a bomb, really. We've had a yeah. lot of huge, insane bombs in this movie. This was not one of them. This was this was kind of a dud. Like this was supposed yeah. to blow up the entire shopping mall. I don't know. Or was there like one in each store? Uh, I don't know what's going on. I feel like three of the Russians with gas just walking through the department mm-hmm. store, crop dusting yep. people. Yep, would have made more of like very a very similar to that. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh-huh. So uh, right before things can get real, uh-huh. real bad. Chuck Norris just plows through one of the entrances of the shopping mall in his sweet fucking 4x4 four four huge truck. Hope nobody's on the other side of those doors that are yeah, civilian. Blasts through the fucking big glass entrance. Uh, people are screaming. There's machine gunning everywhere. Rocket yeah. launching is happening everywhere. He's running down bad guys right and left. I, I wrote down... We got a straight up machine gun fight. Yeah, he steps out of his fucking truck, and this is the first scene where he reveals his signature weapon, his dual Uzis. Those are Mac 10s, I believe. Mac 10s? A little smaller than an Uzi. Just fucking. Just blasting everybody. He's got got a sweet denim shirt still. It's like tucked into his jeans, but buttoned all the way down. So like you're seeing all the chest down to his belly button. Right. It's a cool fucking look. He's got like this double leather. Do it as a Halloween costume this year. Ooh, ooh, I like it. We're all going to go as different Chuck Norris's. Yeah, getting getting a couple of real Mac tens. That'll be nice for you. Mm -hmm. I'll. I'll get you your own gloves. I can't let you borrow my sweet oh, leather no, gloves. Oh, I no, wouldn't, I wouldn't think of it. Um, so they blow up the entire inside of this mall, basically, and it's fucking awesome. Like, oh, man. Just like the fucking cul-de-sac that they blew up, this had to have been like some just empty shopping mall that was like, yep, destroy the whole thing. It's fine. We're done with it. Maria's going to want to go as Jonathan Brandis. She definitely will. Probably from Sequest, though. <sighs> Or maybe from Ladybugs, and you can go as Rodney Dangerfield. I'm okay with That's that promising. arrangement. That's promising right there. Yeah. And I'll go as, uh, who is the sassy black lady from Ladybugs? Jack A. Jack A, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll go as Jack A. That's this, a better right, group we got, outfit. Yeah. We got some, some, some good costumes going. It's acceptable to go in blackface if you're going as Jack A, right? I mean, it's, what is somebody going to do? Tell me, I'll be like, I identify as a woman, uh, you're... You're trampling all over my rights. You have a problem with me being a woman? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. Just yeah. Disgusting. I think, I think that's... I'm allowed to uh, have whatever identity I choose. There you go. I'm Jack A. My pronouns are Jack and K. Hmm. Uh, glasses guy jumps in Marty McFly's truck and hot wires it. Yeah. And just starts fucking tear assing around, just smashing through... This is not just like the hallways of the uh, shopping mall. They're inside no, the, the corridors, stores, just like... And the, and slamming the through like the perfume cases and shit right. like they slam through and break everything it's insane some uh russian dude jumps in front of norris's truck and he runs him over and mm-hmm. through like mm-hmm. a coffee stand mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so many cool car crashing Chuck norris shootings. jumps on top of marty mcfly's truck uh we're tear assing everywhere yeah uh we Burst through one of the exits, all the way through all the glass doors and shit again. Chuck Norris hits the ground fucking rolling during all this. Uh, he did all these stunts here. There's no way Chuck Norris is busting through all this glass. He did that on one. Ground. You, Chuck Norris is too valuable. You can't be he throwing did him through all this fucking glass. that stunt, sir. Um, so, guy gets rid of Chuck Norris, shakes him this loose. This is cool. Uh... This is Some real blonde cool. chick is out in the parking lot, so he grabs her and yanks her up onto the side of the truck as a sort of hostage. She's just dangling a blonde out the window of a truck. Uh, once again, reporter girl somehow just knows to show up whenever something's happening in this city. She just happens to fucking be there. She rolls up in a convertible. Chuck Norris jumps in. He's he's gonna drive. She's not gonna drive. Fucking uh. We got a we got a good old fashioned car chase happening here now. Yeah, and again, I wrote down some chicken a Mustang. Mm-hmm. Is this McGuire? Yeah, turns out it is. Yeah, it's just this same woman who somehow is able to appear in she, every relevant scene. She lets you know it's her by saying "Easy Cowboy." Because apparent cowboy. That's yeah, the thing. she called him that at the beach, which was like forever ago at this point. Quite a long time. 
So even though the bad guy is dangling a blonde lady off the side of uh, the truck, yeah. Chuck Norris still just keeps ramming the truck right. with, with the convertible, yeah. which is pretty sweet. Got to get her to get him to slow down. Yeah. Um, so uh, he's like, hey, reporter chick, make yourself useful. Snatch that blonde and pull her into the car. And they do this like crazy stunt work where it's two speeding vehicles right next to each other. And they're reaching out trying to it's catch the, another the human physics being. and the, the realism of her. Completely over the top. There's no way this woman would be able to pull this other woman out of the terrorist's arms and get her safely in a but But it yeah. happens. Yeah. They save her. Chuck Norris does some fancy Norris driving. Norris is that good of a driver. Sends this idiot into like a fucking line of parked cars in a car lot or something. This fucking Marty McFly truck launches in the air, flips, yeah. instantly explodes while it's in midair, and uh, everybody dies in a fiery explosion. He is it's huge. Pretty cool. It's pretty huge fucking cool. fire explosion. You know who's not happy about it though? Ross stuff. Yeah, he's fucking pissed. Yeah. He's got some brown man pinned up against the wall and he's like, ah, oh, fucking you rat you had to have been you to rat out to Chuck Norris about the shopping mall incident. It's the mustachioed guy from the club. Because you earlier. weren't there, but Chuck Norris was there, so fucking I'm gonna shoot you into the dick. Just like I fucking did Billy Drago earlier. Well, the reason he gets shot in the dick is cause he gives Rostov Chuck's message. Yeah, it's time to die. That's yeah, message. And he's cool like, nobody message. tells me that. Dick shots. So then Nico's like, I can see this is all falling apart. Yeah, you're Let really becoming to unhinged, talk some bro. Sense into you, Rostov. But Rostov's like, no, I've got to kill Chuck Norris. He's like, mm, you're too need important you to the movement, to lead man. This invasion of the USA because yeah. you're such a good military leader. Yeah, we can't risk you trying to kill Chuck Norris and getting hurt, or um, else we'll be back in the U.S. Back in the U.S. Right. Back in the USSR. Which see what I did? Know how lucky they were not getting oh, killed by Chuck me? Norris. It's much safer Ooh. right there for them. So he's like, "All right, you got a good point, Nico." Um, but uh, you know, uh, oh well, well, we still got to take care of Chuck Norris. There's a serious grudge here. We got a walk and talk going in the mall. The FBI and the police guys are all like, things are falling apart. Shopping malls are blowing up. There's armed mobs in the streets. All our officers are calling off because they want to protect their stupid families. Yeah. Some guy says, yeah, and the guard just hit the streets 15 minutes ago. Boom. So we've seen it go from Boom. day to night at least 16 times in this movie. Mm -hmm. So we're going to say 16 days after hundreds of... Uh, Cuban guerrillas 18 hours. invaded we got 18 the United hours. States. Yeah. Now, finally, the National Guard has responded to it. Somebody's showing up. That's all you need to know. Smash cut to tanks rolling down suburban streets. Yeah! Soldiers marching in lockstep. It's full-on daytime again. Uh, cut to Chuck Norris driving around, hitting a National Guard roadblock. It is now fully nighttime again. Yeah, a day's passed. Uh, six seconds is gone from it going to day to night to day uh -huh. to night again. Uh, so this is, once again, at least six months into this invasion. Uh -huh. uh, he tries to evade the guard post, does some slick driving, but eventually uh, a Jeep fucking pulls in front of him and it's like, meh, 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 meh. Chuck Norris, where are you going in your super sweet truck? Yeah. And this is what I wrote. This guy's an Asian guy. Can't be more than one Asian guy in this movie. This has got to be the guy who was posing as a cop earlier, not posing be. as an army guy. It's got to be. Chuck Norris is also like, mm, what's an Asian guy doing dressed as an army guy? That's not right. Yeah. Quick draws him. Fucking, they get in a shootout. Chuck Norris takes him down easy. Uh, I had uh, subtitles going. Uh-huh. I do that often. Yeah. Just in case. Because you're I so deaf. I am. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I look down and up, you know, you're doing typing, this and that. And it's a quick way, like, you can look. Probably eating some pizza rolls. You got to. Mm -hmm. uh, pizza bagels. Ooh. Yeah. Pizza's not a bagel. You can have it anytime. Anytime you want. It's so convenient. When when the dude gets Pizza's shot. not on a bagel. It's just like, oh, when am I going to find time for this? Maybe dinner if you're lucky. If you got <laughs> if time. If you're lucky, yeah. Come on. To sit down. Uh, when the dude gets shot and he yells, it's in Spanish. Oh, wow. Even though he's Asian. Yeah. Because <laughs> our bad it's guys. possible. It's possible. My wife was There's like Asians in Cuba. My wife was like, he looks like he's Chinese. Why is he yelling in Spanish? And I was like, well, they're terrorists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, Asian guys on the ground, but not quite dead. Chuck Norris is like, spill the beans, bro. What's all the terrorist plans? And he's like, fuck you, Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris blows his fucking brains yeah. out. Live or die, die. So he goes to the Wrong. next guy and it's like, all right, shoots him. Second in the head. Cuban gorilla. 
uh, you are a white guy with curly yeah. red hair. Let's see what you have to say. And he's like, relax, Chuck Norris. I am white and sensible. Mm-hmm. I will tell you, he's in a field, but you won't never catch him. I wrote down, what country are we being invaded by at this point? Terrorists. Yeah, it's terrorist invasion. Yeah. It's one of the scariest kind. Yeah. They're, uh, the fucking, uh, main guy, Rostov, mm-hmm. again, with subtitles on, they let you know the different languages that are sure. being spoken. Oh, I see. And, like, sometimes he's yelling in Russian. He's probably one of those Ukrainian Nazis, I would imagine. Other times Ukrainian. he's yelling in German. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that makes a ton of sense, for uh-huh. sure. All citizens are urged to stay off the streets at this point. Um, it's martial law. It's nighttime. There's choppers and like uh, spotlights everywhere. Loudspeakers are telling everybody to stay off the streets. But for some reason, we're seeing like a lame dad in a yellow mm-hmm. sweater, like dragging his wife and kid like through all the fucking extremely dangerous chaos. Yeah. You're know, like, what are these people doing? Like, uh. Are they probably something important? Have they joined the resistance? Like, uh, Jesus. do they have some information for Chuck Norris? Jesus. No, he's just dragging them out Jesus. to a nighttime church service. Jesus. That's happening in the middle of his town being invaded by foreign terrorists. And the pl- it's like a full... Preachers preach into a full house. Yeah. All these fucking white people came out yeah. in the middle of the USA invasion. No better just time. Just to hear a fucking sermon. No better time. Fucking white people, man. They're crazy about church. You want to go to a place where everybody knows your name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You so, know? uh... These dumbass white people are about to get killed. Make your uh, way in the day to day. Takes everything you got. Fucking like your world uh, today. another brown guy rolls up to the front yeah. of the church with just a brick of plastique because we're in the era of plastique very much so here in 1985. He's got a suitcase full it, of it. Sticks it up next to the door. Right against the door. Rolls out with a long spool ass cable. Of just cable. Spool of cable. <laughs> gonna detonate this shit. Gonna blow up this yeah. church and uh, murder all of the people inside of it. Oh, is which, that that song Charlie sings and that uh rock flag and eagle it's exactly that yeah. song for yeah. sure gonna get a little plastic gonna put oh. it on a church gonna i think yeah that's it. it could be yeah i think that's how it went that's your, it's uh, been a while since i've seen it he takes it away he's uh getting ready getting ready mm-hmm. flips that switch mm. Ooh, church doesn't explode should have blown up by now should have blown up by now mm. suddenly in a hilarious moment Chuck Norris appears on the roof above them like yeah. fucking Batman. Yeah. And is like, ah, oh, you have a little problem with your uh, suitcase bomb here? Chucks it down at them and then reveals that he's cut the wire, which he then hot wires right in front of them. Should work now. So they can watch themselves get exploded by their own suitcase bomb. As he says, it should work now. It should work now. The timeline and the logistics of Chuck Norris Taking this thing, climbing onto a roof. Uh-huh. I don't know. It's been like 20 seconds. They unspool the thing, get behind a car, try to hit the button. I'm sorry. He's appeared somehow on a roof above them after stealing it, which they don't. It's insane. Nate. <laughs> the scene is insane. Was there some point in the movie, though, where like he wasn't Chuck Norris anymore? He's... Uh, no, he's still Chuck Norris and throughout this whole thing. But so, uh, works perfectly fine. Would have loved to have seen him have some Batman grappling hooks, though, because we know he's got spelunking skills. Nate. We learned that in Missing in Action. <laughs> I heard you. Save it already. Why is he not clambering up this, this, this building on camera? I'm going to splice together some scenes from this movie with Nirvana something in the way. Okay. Don't worry, yeah, okay? That's, oh, that's going to be emotional. You're going to like that. There's food shortages after this. Swear me. We're outside of a grocery store. The grocery store manager's on the fucking horn, and he's like, uh, we're going to have to do bread lines and stuff because the invasion of the U.S. Bread line, comrade. Has gone on for so long now. We are in month 18 of the invasion this of the U.S. This is what USA. they wanted. The U.S. government still has not responded to it nope. in any sort of way. Nope. Uh, they're just riding it out and seeing what's going to happen, yep. basically, is what's happening. People are fucking livid. Rostov's plan is working. He is turning the American people against each other, Matt. I wish there was a reporter at the grocery store to cover all this. Oh, good news. Fucking whatever her fake fucking name is. Uh, Dolly McGuire? Dolly McGuire is once again just 
randomly shown up someplace in the town wow. right before some shit's about to pop off. What are the odds? It's crazy, but uh, yeah, so some fake army guys are in the background. They just put their machine guns up and are getting ready to uh, massacre all the people in this bread you line. Got to. When suddenly Chuck Norris plows through some parked cars in his sweet truck and he starts fucking just shotgunning all the bad guys. Yep. Once again, at this point... Chuck Norris can just magically appear whenever an attack's going to happen in this movie. Him and the him and the reporter girl have some sort of psychic spider senses that uh, alert them to any impending danger happening somewhere in in the. Is this all in the same town, or are we going all throughout the United <laughs> continent of the, the continual United States right here? You have to tell me what state are they hitting next. I have to drive there in John Eagle's truck. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's uh, been shot a million times. At this point, any sort of like... Uh, f- His truck got shot up so bad in that mall scene. Yeah, but you know, it's a pretty cool, big, awesome truck. He's just... Yeah, that's a good point. He's plowing through everything, killing... Yeah. More importantly, though, yeah, yeah, this movie ahead. at this point uh-huh. has lost any semblance of a yeah. story that develops from scene to scene. Uh-huh. Now we are just watching uh, completely context-free scenes of... Explosions. Terrorist exploding things yeah. and Chuck Norris and the reporter lady showing up out of nowhere somehow yeah. this and back, then battling them for a few minutes. This back half of the movie is where things really get good. <laughs> Just really, yeah, this good. Is, <laughs> this yeah. is when it starts this is where it gets strong. pretty fucking good. Uh, yeah, so Nico is there uh-huh. and he takes the reporter girl hostage. But then once again, Chuck Norris has like Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees skills. So yeah. he just appears behind Nico. Yep. And I don't even see what happens here. He just takes him down in like a split second. All right. And then Nico's out of the movie. I'm like, whoa. The second fucking bad guy just fucking gets taken out fucking instantly with like nothing in a throwaway scene. What the fuck? That should have been a big showdown. It was not fucking nothing. Nico. It was, it was He's nothing. He's following them in traffic. These guys plow through a construction site. Kill a bunch of construction workers, okay? You don't like seeing that. It's a big no-no nowadays. Like the Union would have still been working in a USA invasion is what I was thinking. That's a very good point. Uh, Oh, no, we had to keep going in the the, uh, fucking pandemic, you know, essential workers. Oh, it's ridiculous. I know. The fucking Nico in his Cadillac broham with his Mm brohams, they chase down a bus slap a time bomb on okay, the bus. Okay, this is going on yeah. the whole fucking uh, next scene. All right, so Nico does show up again. Just this is Chuck Nico. Norris knock yeah. Because he just knocked him down for a second, and then I thought he disappeared out of the movie. Oh, okay, all right. I'm sorry. I fucking trailed off and thought you were covering this already. No, 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 no. Nico doesn't die at the... Or did he die there? I don't know. If he's involved he in the right. next chase, I, I didn't recognize him. he's in the next him. one. Okay, so... Kids in cages is my next bullet point. Yeah. We're going to get into this bus chase. Here we go. Suddenly, yeah. we get to scene with a bunch of tear-filled, like, uh, goodbyes. Parents are putting their children unaccompanied. Right. Except for, I guess, by one bus driver. Correct. Onto a school bus. Right. And they're like, sorry, you got to go. You're going to be much country. safer. They're sending them to the country. Where in the country? <laughs> what is this? I don't know. Why like, aren't the parents going to the country, too? If, Who, who's driving this school bus? Where is he taking them to? If this was our town, at least Demott. Okay, kids. Uh, g- goodbye. We're being invaded by terrorists. Yeah. Uh, we're going to entrust you with this school bus driver, yeah. I guess. He's going he's t- to take care of you all out in the country. He's going to take He's your you, father now, he, 45 to 50 children. He's going to take you at least 40 minutes south of where we are now. You're going to be safe there. I don't know what kind of plan this is. They should all just be hunkered down in their basements, in, my, think, in my opinion. I think this was the first season uh, cast of, uh, what's that, Kids World? Uh, Kid Nation? Kid Nation? Yeah. They, uh... Failed reality show that yeah, our favorite a lot show of, lawsuits of all time. When they separated a bunch of children from their parents and allowed them to set up an old western town in the country, yeah, to keep them safe from invasion. USA. Yeah, maybe it was just going to be a whole kid nation. These kids were going to Lord of the Flies themselves out in right. the woods somewhere. God, what a great fucking show that was. Yeah, they really need to bring that back. Lawsuits be Please. damned. Uh, everybody's woke now, so your kid can survive. They're Pussy. not going to explain where these kids are going and why it makes no sense. Just because basically all we need is a school bus full of tiny children to be put in danger right Right. here is what we need. 
They're out on the highway, off to the country. Yes, sir. They all spart- start spontaneously singing Row, Row, Row Your Boat together. Just to keep them happy. As they've just uh, been uh, ripped out of their parents' arms. Nothing and uh, keeps taken kids out. happier than that. These kids would not be singing. These kids would be screaming just in a cacophonous annoying they'd be yeah. bullying each other like Something picking boogers way. there'd be they'd like probably be singing fucking that. like weird mm. i don't know maybe they'd play playing like Game Boy systems or something right now. Somebody would be throwing gum in somebody else's hair. Somebody would be feeling up would somebody not be a bunch of bus. cherubic young kids singing Row, Row, Row Your Boat together. Not buying it. Kids are monsters. Yeah, the but worst. Yeah, some bad guys in a car. Maybe this is Nico again. I don't know. Last time I saw him, he was being like kung fu gripped to the ground by Chuck Norris out of nowhere. Yeah, maybe he's They dead stick already. some plastique onto the side anymore. of a fucking bus. Yeah. Chuck Norris is like, you know what? I can sense when anything bad happens with my telepathic powers. I'm suddenly out on the highway in my fucking truck yeah. running this school bus down to make sure everything happens okay. He was right behind them. He knew something was up. <clears throat> he, Even though he really didn't see gotta, them drive through the construction count, we zone. We got a countdown. It's yeah. 90 seconds until this school oh, yeah. bus full of children explodes. It's close. Uh, I also like how these guys are just basically pranksters. It's a, it's a liberal again, 90 their seconds. Their invasion of the USA right now is just like, well... We still haven't taken down any infrastructure or any uh, of the power grid or anything. Uh, got to got to blow up that bus full of school children, though. Mm-hmm. That's the next step in our plan mm-hmm. to invade the USA. That's what you want. Either way, Chuck Norris uh, has got a cool truck that's real fast, so he gets there. It's John Eagles in plenty of time. He rips the plastic off the side of the bus. He fucking guns it. He yeah. catches up with the bad guys. Chucks their own bomb into their fucking car. With 30 seconds left on the bomb, he catches up to their car in a 30-second <laughs> scene and uh, reattaches it to their car right. with about one second removed from the timer. And uh, he says to them, you lose this? That's a cool, cool dad fucking line. line. Fucking cool line. Like, Turns out they lost it on purpose. They didn't want yeah. it back. Their car explodes. They're all dead. Chuck dead Norris murders shit. them all. Some more bad guys down. Maybe Nico was in the car. I'm not sure. He's, Maybe he died from one karate chop three he's scenes earlier. Killed I don't know. so many people in front of children at this point. <laughs> Next scene, speaking of uh sad children, Chuck Norris is just uh, walking through an empty carnival all sad. As they play Nirvana Basically, something in the way. That or the end credits song from The Incredible Hulk. Like either Ooh, one would have been appropriate fair. over the soundtrack yeah. here. And I was like <sighs> What's happening in this movie at this point? Yeah. Why is he alone in the middle of... This isn't even a carnival like we know about. Like, no. There's not a scene from earlier where like we see him having better times in this carnival or it anything. It was one of the Invasion he's USAs. Like, sure is so sad that this carnival got exploded off he's, camera at some he's point. He's just thinking to himself, imagine. God, not another Invasion USA. So what's happening is he's meeting the suits again, his superiors. Yeah. And, uh, they're like, uh, hey, what's up, man? Uh... So, you've been single-handedly battling the invasion of the United States for two years now. Uh, yeah. We're kind of thinking about maybe we're going to, like, send the military in. Yeah. We're going to maybe tell the president and, like, his generals and maybe have them take a crack at uh, battling back the invasion of the USA. Also, we're going to, like, build a new military because, like, <laughs> there's that phony military that's out and about killing yeah. people. Which is confusing for the people in this movie. And the as watchers. As well as the viewers yeah. of the film because you're never able to distinguish between who the good guys or the bad guys yeah. are or, or why you're seeing what you're seeing. Yep. Chuck Norris is like, you know what? Uh, I got a plan. And, yeah. Uh, don't you worry about it. You give me one other crack at it. The guy's just like, <sighs> that's suicide, Chuck Norris. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. And, He's like, it's uh, cool. I got this letter, a list of demands for the feds. Mm-hmm. So give this to your boss. Yeah. And they're like, all right. Um, it's you suicide. You seem confident. Uh, but... You've gotten zero results up to this point, so yeah. I guess we'll just continue with it. Whatever you need, Chuck Norris. He's like, bro, I just vowed to not let the bad guy win. <laughs> you just heard me. Yeah. There's th- this time it's personal. Like, what do you what do you, have you not seen a Chuck Norris movie, dude? Next scene, another news broadcast is going on. They're like, oh, uh, things are still happening with people invading the United States. States uh, are teaming up to make a super army. 
channel changes. Called the Army. It's just an old UFO movie on suddenly. We see that Chuck Norris is just fully dressed in his denims and his boots, laying in a shady motel bed, just watching old 50s UFO movies. Yeah. Uh, cut away from that to a bunch of like uh, SWAT team guys, like SWAT team in a building. I hadn't yeah. put together this is all happening concurrently once, so I was like, well, that was a weird 15-second scene of Chuck Norris watching a UFO old movie. What, the, what was the point of that? Now, here, Nate, here's Cut where- back to him watching again, so you're like, oh, they're swatting into the, the hotel that he's in. Hold on, though. Here was my conundrum. I wasn't yeah, like, sure. why is the SWAT team at this other place? Why did we show Chuck Norris? Sure. I followed that part. I was like, wait, who are these people? Yeah. Are these real cops? Are these fake cops yeah, like the, the bad fake guys army? find out where Chuck are Norris these, is? Right. I don't know who these people are. I'm just paranoid this whole movie There's now. There's no way for us to know. But they all crash into the room he's in, and he's sitting all casual on the bed, just yeah. like, oh, hey, dude. So I'm just like, this <laughs> Kevin Hobbs is funny. got to be all part of his suicidal plan. Yeah, Step one, nut. get arrested by, I don't know, just the Miami Police Department. <laughs> Who's to say? While looking casually Who's to cool. Say? Next scene, Rostov is watching three TVs. You want to oh, talk yeah. about being casually cool? You just got three TVs you can yeah. flip back and forth on? That's pretty fucking cool. In that you know who else did? Uh, I don't know. Elvis. Who was that? Elvis had three TVs? Yeah. God, he that's famously awesome. shot one. Yeah, I remember that uh, happening in that itchy and scratchy cartoon. Where the he... show ain't no good. Yeah! <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I famously had seen the TV he oh, shot. Oh, wow. At Graceland? They removed it from the tour since. That's a shame. Where Turns did, out where did it go to? all the cool shit you can see they on his tour. put it in a Hard Rock Cafe probably? And now they just like took it off the tour and then put it in like a more expensive thing. Like you can see his house. Now you can see the shit that people know about mm-hmm. for so more monies. One of the TVs he flips to is just like, uh, breaking news, a vigilante has been arrested. Yeah. And he's like, well, that's got to be Chuck Norris. Right. Because... Of course, government operative Chuck Norris would get arrested for vigilanteism as he's the only man tasked with fighting off the invasion of the United States. I know instantly what they're talking about here. I like that they're like... He's a sitting duck. This man's killed at least 10 of the terrorists. (laughs) It's like 10 of them? And hundreds of innocent bystanders. This war's been going on for like a year now. So many, so many nights and days we've been through at this point. Next scene is daylight again, by the way, and uh, Chuck Norris... Oh, did you announce that they were like, oh, and he's going to the headquarters of our new military, and it's in Atlanta? Right. So, uh, any terrorists... Rostov's like, hmm, I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, so uh, next scene is broad daylight. He's a... Uh, I'm a terrorist. I'm listening. Got his... He's handcuffed, and he's still got his denim shirt fully unbuttoned. Right. He's still in his outfit, and they're taking him into, I guess, the... Atlanta military, right? Southern even, Alliance of the Friendship of Military. It's just an office building, though. They just take him into an office Shh. building. <laughs> Shh. Shh. <laughs> Terrorists don't oh, know. Okay, okay, but yeah. Uh, of course, reporter girl is here. It's she's, the sexiest perp walk of all time, ain't it? She's yeah. It's he really looks nice. He looks it's, great. I'm surprised they didn't make him button up a shirt or something, but uh, uh, reporter girl's here. She's like, "Give me a scoop. I need a quote." Here's a scoop. I might fuck you. That's right. They're dropping flyers um, that a curfew's been declared. Yeah. So it turns into night again. We uh, get that sweet crane shot, though, of the flyers raining down on old uh, Dolly McGuire. As they're dragging Chuck Norris uh, into captivity, they allow him to just stop and have a casual interview with uh, the girl while he's in handcuffs. Yeah. And he looks into the camera and pro wrestling promos to Rostov. Yeah. Hell yeah. He tells him that he's coming for him. Yeah. Which makes no sense because he's not coming for anybody. He's just being handcuffed and thrown into a jail. But this is all about him baiting Rostov, yeah. Matt. He he's trying to get know. under Rostov's skin. He's like, take your vitamins, brush your teeth, and say your prayers, brother, because one night when you open your eyes, I'll be there, and that'll be the time to die. That's how a pro wrestler would have said it, but this is Chuck Norris, so he's very monotonously uh, oh. s- s- saying it. Uh, oh. huh. you're, you're right, though. Hulk Hogan in this movie? Yeah. Could have been a better movie. Ooh, Could have wow. been a better movie. 
Ooh, he would hate if anybody invaded USA in 85. He was very patriotic at the time. Woo! So Rostov hears this this direct message to him, angrily yeah. turns off his TV, uh, and then we sort of zoom out to see that he's in just like some sort of very well-appointed penthouse apartment. Yeah. And I wrote, first he's hanging out at a beach club. Uh-huh. Now he's in somebody's penthouse apartment. He came over here on like a fishing boat. Where is he? Crime pays. I guess crime pays for sure. You need to uh, know. International terrorist, most wanted man in the world, just mm-hmm. hanging out in nice apartments apparently mm. while invading the USA with a guerrilla army. Where's the guerrilla army? Are they all like uh, put up in nice apartments too? Is various that, spots. Is that what's happening here? Yeah, various spots. Over the course spots. of the previous nine months at least of invasion. Yeah, we're months in. They're spread out months throughout the country. In, yeah, for sure. There are uh, ramadas yeah. all throughout the country. Assets everywhere. Like the fucking, yeah, this is basically a G.I. Joe cartoon. It's ramadas You're watching a live open? action G.I. Joe cartoon. Uh, in 2022? Yeah. I gotta imagine so. Why would you shut yeah. down ramada? It's a very reliable... Uh, Motel chain. Ramada, hit us up in your DMs if you're still there. I'll take a jacuzzi suite on the house. Next scene, we're in some sort of like motor pool. There's a bunch of cops Jacuz. milling around and uh, drinking coffee and whatnot. Yeah. And we get this awesome scene, just like cameras just like behind a cop sitting at a desk over his shoulder when just like the... Thank you. The like fucking... Garage door? Garage door in front of him just explodes at us. Oh. And you just see like the shockwave come towards the camera and obliterate the man who the camera's right in front of. He just gets fucking rocketed know, like, a million feet into the camera. This has got to be just some sort of like simple fucking shot they did practically, yeah. but it looks so fucking cool. Like I don't think I've ever seen an awesome explosion it's, shot like this in an action movie. Before. It's a full-on explosion of the garage that comes inward mm-hmm. while the stunt man's clearly hooked up to a classic pulley effect yeah. where they pull him backwards fucking violently. Yanked. Very violent. But the bad. camera's just right over his shoulder. It looks so fucking cool, man. Bad guys start pouring in from all angles. It's a full on assault. Rostov has ordered his entire army to convene in Atlanta and assault this one building that he's been told very conspicuously yeah. on television that Chuck Norris is in. I mean, the guy's an idiot. Maybe the worst military commander of all time. Who, Rostov? He's literally putting. All of his eggs in one basket right here. This is what Nico what is tried to warn him about. Clearly going to be a trap. Nico's dead this at this point, though. This is what he was so trying to warn him about. Nobody left because Nico died maybe on camera, maybe off camera. We were not 100% sure. There wasn't a big dramatic Nico death scene, but we were told at some point, oh, Nico's dead, by the way, now. This guy's just... Ugh. So, uh, tanks and choppers and trucks and things are pouring in oh from everywhere. And... Are these all old bad guys or are all some of them good guys? I don't know because the movie's given us no way to distinguish between them. It's just dozens and dozens of shots of people going places that, w- that we're getting right here. So I, I wrote down, uh, you know, uh, Rostov and his men mount up. Mm-hmm. They steal the armored trucks. There's a huge drive-by war shootout. Absolutely. No idea who is who. That's right. Everything is be no just... no way to tell shooting, yep, and I don't know at what. Yep. I wrote, this movie has just become visual noise at this point. Yeah. Like, uh, seriously, they're shooting, and I'm not even sure in what direction. No, we don't even see and what they're who. shooting at. It's just still just shots of people are driving people around shooting, shooting. And then another shot of people shooting. Yeah. <laughs> Never at anything in particular, just shots of people shooting. It's getting wild. So, uh... At one point, a chopper lands on a building. Yeah. Uh, Rostov gets all boned up, yeah. and he's like, Take it down! Take it down! So uh, he does, and uh, Chuck Norris casually saunters up to the oh, chopper, yeah. wearing his Canadian tuxedo with a fucking rocket launcher that he throws over his shoulder. Yeah. Turns out Chuck Norris didn't get arrested at all. No. He could, he could leave whenever he wants. He's sh- a CIA operative. They should have played that fucking Jack Slater theme when he walked Ooh, onto the roof cool, there that like yeah. Do we get like a still shot of his like cowboy boot stepping down? Oh yeah, it pans up. Yeah, 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 I thought so. A cool pan up, yeah. So he blows up this fucking chopper and it's I don't know, kind of presented as a big moment, but I was like, well, that was just 
one chopper pilot who we haven't been introduced to at any point in this movie. So why was him getting waxed such a big moment when because... every other shot is uh, just things exploding and vehicles exploding and people being shot from all different angles? It's a big deal. It's Rostov's, it's Rostov's getaway chopper. Sure, it sure. signifies it's time to die. But he also seemingly has hundreds of other vehicles and choppers no. all uh, swarming around this building at the same time. So Chuck's hatched Maybe somebody his, else could have given him a right out. Chuck has hatched his plan. It is time mm-hmm, to die. Mm-hmm. So, Rostov and his guys uh, storm the government building right through the front yeah. door. They're just emptying thousands and thousands of rounds into oh, this building. So many. Clearly an empty building. Mm-hmm. They're just... Going from scene or fucking room to room, just shooting. So many rooms. Plants, desks, water coolers. It. Nobody's in here. They see nobody, but they just keep indiscriminately shooting and yeah. shooting and shooting, and it makes zero fucking sense. <laughs> like it's it's great. This is like clearly whatever stage sound lot that they have canon oh, does absolutely this is and they've not a real office building no. interiors these are cardboard walls that we're storming yeah. into and shooting bullets through and they've built like three floors mm-hmm. that are just dubbing as multiple floors that's right and clearly they're just like repurposing sections of drywall with new squibs put that's in right. to just explode everywhere so it's, uh, it's cool a good five minutes of them just Shoot, shooting shit. and running and shooting happens before finally Rostov stops and in his uh, genius uh, military commander uh, brain uh, says out loud, hang on, I think this is a trap. Could be. I think we. I just marched every single asset I have into the yeah. United States into a trap maybe. There's, there's nobody inside of this. This is just a... Stupid empty office building. Might not want to do this. I think this is what Nico could have been talking about. The gorillas try to leave at this point. Yeah, let's they're go like, back to right, our let's, helicopter. Let's get out of here. Go back to all our... But then they're surrounded by tanks. And it's like, oh Ooh. no. Those are apparently good guy tanks and not our bad guy tanks. Ooh. We're all trapped. And then there's just many, many more shots of people shooting at this point. Yeah. Just, once again... Half of them dressed like army guys. Half of them dressed like army guys. They're all just shooting at nothing. Yeah, the bad guys are like, all right, let's get back to the roof where our helicopter is. Oh, no. Get the fuck out of here. All we find on the roof is Chuck Norris shooting at us with a machine gun. That's not good. Back into the office building, I guess. Fuck. So now Chuck Norris is just in the office building. Yeah. Just Walking down perfectly lit fucking hallways, just right. boots clomping. <laughs> like, yeah. He's still chasing like a hundred bad guys, but uh-huh. he's doing nothing to like creep around and hide behind desks and stalk them or whatever. It makes no sense. Every once in a while, for no reason, one of them will just like wander into the same room he's in and then he'll yeah. shoot them. It's like he's it's like a video game. It's like he's infiltrating like the bad guy compound. Right. Where they're like there's guards on duty and he's taking out the guards. Except he's not. Left to right. This isn't their compound. They all came in there en masse and then ran away en masse. Why are they now, like, guarding the place individually? (laughs) Because they've fallen victim to Chuck Norris's master scheme here. That's right. The master scheme has uh, taken over at this point. He's got him right where he wants him. He kicks some dude in the head massive style, and it's, like, Mm -hmm. one of the first Mm -hmm. good, like, Norris head it's kicks. It's weird we get. that there's so little kicking in yeah. this movie, and maybe nary a like full on roundhouse. A lot of sidekicks, like yeah. not even like one slow mo. Oh, full on roundhouse to a guy's temple. This is like that's like his gimmick. He's not leaning into it. This is the most the like the closest we get because he does that like super kick, lean back, full extension. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's a very beautiful kick. I wrote down right after this because they cut away after the kick back to the streets, and I wrote, Jesus Christ, there's a war in the streets. <laughs> there is. There's, two, it's a there's full, literally two armies it's a full fucking having a war. war in what we're told is downtown Atlanta. Yeah. So that's some pretty serious shit. However, uh-huh. cut back into the interior. Chuck yeah. Norris alone. Once again, we're doing like some sort of faux tense horror movie scene, but there's really no tension because... 
We haven't established any danger that lurks around any corner. We don't know where Rostov is. No, like, Chuck Norris is the danger. Yeah, fucking like, but there's tense like music playing. Like, oh no, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Well, we don't know because nothing's been established. There's no end game we're driving towards in this movie at nah. this point. We're Norris, just watching shit happen. Norris shoots up a couple more terrorists, mm-hmm. and then he's like, "It's time to put the Mac tens down finally yeah. and pick up." At the one point, M16 with a grenade he launcher. He looks at a door, and there's like two guys hiding this on opposite great. sides of the door. It's a super tense and he's like, horror movie mm, scene. I can kind of sense with yeah. uh, my maybe Indian senses that mm-hmm. John Redcorn probably taught me at there some you point, go. even though there was no backstory between who he was and yeah. who we were his friends, that there's somebody in the next room. Let me, I don't know, what's he got, like a it's, sp- Split grenade launcher. It's an M16 with a grenade launcher. Yeah, but he shoots two grenades at the same time that split off and hit opposite sides of the door and blow up two oh, perfect no. holes exactly where these guys were standing. That's just him shooting and ripping with the fucking M16. It's fucking awesome. He's he just sawing the fucking wall and Blows half. up two gigantic walls exactly where these guys are. The door is perfectly intact, but yeah. on both sides of them, giant man-sized holes blown in the wall where right. these guys are dead. So... That's that's pretty fucking awesome. Good shit. Yeah, shit um, just got serious. Finally, Rostov shows up. So we're gonna do the big showdown yeah. between Chuck and Rostov. Rostov's in full leathers from head to toe, and Chuck's in full denim from head to toe. Yep. So it's kind of cool they got their own outfits. Rostov's also got some sort of gigantic fucking machine gun. So it's like spy versus spy. They both spy. got badass weapons. Uh, they're kind of just stalking around these empty, clearly very, very fake office building sets and, like, shooting at each other. Chuck knows that Rostov's chasing him, and he's like, Mm -hmm. "Mm, I'm going to play a little cat and mouse with you, buddy, Mm -hmm. you know? I'm going to Chuck Norris the shit out of this. I've got fucking Mike Myers powers. i got Batman powers. I'm showing them all through this thing. you got no choice. No chance, Rostov. Yeah, you nearsighted Russian terrorist. Also, I wrote, uh, we had uh, the opportunity to explode an entire suburban neighborhood. Opportunity to explode an entire shopping mall. Wonder how this ends? Now the big climax is just happening on clearly just like a set where we're shooting through paper-thin cardboard walls. This is... A, Patience. A much more, much more boring setting. Patience. Maybe they should have saved one of those other two for the big climax. We're still getting somewhere. Patience. Are we? Yes. Oh, take me there. You're getting there. Take me there because you're getting there. I'm losing interest very quickly at this point. Either way, we got a little cat and mouse, and Chuck's like, "Where am I at? You gotta find me. It's time to die." Mm-hmm. And he's like, "I gotta kill this guy before he kills me. I'm insane." Cut back to just shots of war happening in the streets yeah contextless there's no named characters out there there's no, no. stakes to anything that's happening but we keep cutting back and forth yeah. from that insane large-scale uh fight to just these guys aimlessly walking around through the yeah. halls of this abandoned <laughs> office building i've abandoned my office building it's very boring it's uh, very boring for the giant climax of this pretty fun movie up to this point finally chuck does the old uh, hide and ambush move again? Mm-hmm. That just starts beating the shit out of Rostov. Yeah, because Rostov's just kind of like a old, old man with burn old, scars yeah, all over him. He's not gonna be able victim. to. He's not gonna be able to fist fight Chuck Norris. No, that's, that's for sure. Meanwhile, in the streets, uh, the Russian army's like, <sighs> we surrender. We give up. At this one was, point, they just all tough. throw their hands up and they're like, yeah. "All right, we're no longer invading the USA. You win." Yeah. Uh, Rostov gets away from fucking Norris for a second and then reappears mm-hmm. with a fucking bazooka. Oh, shit. This movie loves fucking rocket launchers. Why Why wouldn't we have a couple more for the final showdown? I'm like, this guy's got a fucking bazooka again. Mm-hmm. This movie's Once straight again, up insane. Somebody's going to get close-ranged bazooka'd when they're both in the same room together? Hell yeah. Fucking, who should enter behind him? Uh-oh. Fucking just rises out of the nothing. Chuck Norris. What's he got in his Also hand? with a fucking bazooka. <sighs> Rostov is like, hang on. Did I just sense Chuck Norris appear out of nowhere behind me with a bazooka? Fuck. This is going to be a quick draw bazooka deal. 
The only I've already got mine up to my shoulder. Hell yeah. The only chance I have is to spin around and rocket launch him before he has the opportunity to put his up to his shoulder and rocket launch me. He spins around just Huzzah! in time for Chuck Norris to say, It's time. Wow. He shoots his rocket launcher from the hip. Bazooka he doesn't even have to bazooka him from, from his the shoulder. Fucking hip. Shoots from the hip like a cowboy. You know the kind of core strength this guy's got? Blows up Rostov. Rostov's blowing up body, goes flying through a fucking window, blows up in the air. Before he even hits the ground, we yeah. cut to the end credits. We're fucking done. Fucking canon Movie's pictures. Over. If you can give them credit for one thing. As soon as the bad guy's fucking dead, Movie's they just done. end the fucking movie. The end. The fucking end. It was time. Time to die, just like you told him earlier. Yeah. That's it for uh, the bullet points. That's it for us uh, digging deep into our film. But we're going to take a little break. You're going to hear some coming attractions. And when we come back, Invasion USA will enter the Judgment Day. No, it's not funny. It's scary. Oh, scary. From the director of Poltergeist and the writer of Alien comes a terrifying new film. I'm getting a very small radar cross section. 150 miles long. EGR is confirmed. Tell them we have an artificial object out here. In the tale of Haley's Comet, <gasps> there's something wrong. Something ancient. Something evil. Jesus. Houston, we have a problem. Something's happening to me. Something hungry. That's brought to Earth. She's destroyed worlds. That girl was no girl. She was totally alien to this planet and our life form. And totally dangerous. I just found a body in Hyde Park. Life Force. Close your eyes. Visited you how? In my mind. Let it go! It's already spreading. You didn't stop it. It's too late. Come. Be with me. Life Force. The terror has just begun. Meet the two toughest cops in town. All right, get in the back. One's just a little smarter than the other. It's okay. All right, I'll split them with you. I'll split them with you. I'll split them with you. Okay. Look, let's get one thing straight. The woman is mine. In the dog-eat-dog -dog world of crime... A man's best friend just might be man's best friend. James Belushi in K-9, rated PG-13. Starts Friday, April 28th at Theatres Everywhere. Okay, it's a party. It's fucking... Just trying to get people pumped. Getting, yeah, we're just getting jacked up. Uh, yeah. just getting around hour two of this podcast. Once, uh -huh. Probably got to wake some... Anybody who's asleep in a chair right now, uh, right. We're, we're getting ready to wrap this shit up. So, right. so you know, look alive, look alive. We're almost gonna hit that Canon Films end credits. Tom, wake up! It's time to turn off Sven Gulli and cue up that rerun of Ricky Lake. Berwin. All right, let's get into Judgment Day. Judgment Day is when we go out to the internet to see what you, the people, had to say about the film that we watched. We compile some five Ninja Star reviews. Uh -huh. People who love this flick. Compile some one Ninja Star reviews. Turns out there's some people who didn't like this flick, Matt. Not at all. That sounds like idiots, but we go ahead. We read them. We judge them. We judge think them about hard. them. But then ultimately we make the final judgment on the film ourselves because only our opinion matters. If I'm being honest, mm -hmm. I judge 
these reviewers harder Ooh. than I judge the film. Judges the judgers. Hmm. First, one Ninja Star hmm. review here is from a Letterboxd user yes, named Ranger Gif. Ranger Gif. Who says, Invasion USA was bad in 85, but viewed again, it was pointless and stupid. Hmm. This generic action film has nothing going for it. Hmm. Even Chuck was bad. Not bad in a good way, like he usually is, but really bad. I don't know, he's seen many Chuck Norris movies. He's yeah. usually bad in a pretty legitimate yeah, way. I don't think this guy's seen very many of them. Get a load of this. Cobra is no longer my most hated 80s action film. <laughs> At least you can rip Cobra while watching it. Deadite Dave and I spent most of this movie trying to figure out what was going on. What? <laughs> Not only did Chuck get in front of Dead the bad Eye guys Dave? continually. That's right. That's what he said. But he stayed in front of us as well. Heck, I still can't figure out who Chuck was fighting. I think it started out with one Russian and a bunch of Cubans. It seemed that in the end he was fighting all nationalities, races, religions, and creeds. My friend Reaver <laughs> Ron thought it was insane. Chuck still won, but you can't tell me that they couldn't get enough Cubans. Also, can anyone tell me how Chuck managed to get that bomb from in front of the church without being seen? I would really like to know. Yeah, he climbed up on top of the church, dipshit. Never heard a Batman ended up on a roof, you idiot? Something in the... One ninja star from Letterbox user Ranger Gif. One ninja star and about 20 for that dipshit. Uh, the next one is not so long-winded. It's short and to the point. Okay, I like and, uh, those ones. Kind of has the cadence of somebody who's got some street cred. So listen up to this one. I think uh, maybe they're going to be able to sway you. This is a one Ninja Star review from Letterbox user Cosmic Nothing. Hmm. Cosmic Nothing says, Bro, ain't nobody trying to invade Florida. One Ninja Star from <laughs> Cosmic Nothing. <laughs> it's kind of a good point. Invading the USA? What's, what's in Florida to take control of? Yeah, the only people invading... Fan boat tours. The only That's people in invading Florida are just... Puerto Ricans and Cubans yeah. looking for, for literally, refugee. Literally. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> Another person getting directly to the point here is our first five Ninja Star review. This is a five Ninja Star review from Letterboxd user Jeremy Allison, who simply says, Okay. They killed Chuck Norris's armadillo and ruined Christmas. They are the meanest terrorists ever. Five Ninja Stars from Letterboxd user Jeremy Allison. <laughs> I mean, they did definitely ruin Christmas, but Chuck Norris's armadillo got away. I guess probably drowned or starved alone in the swamp because he fanboated away without taking care of it. So Yeah, that's more on Chuck, though. Collateral damage. Ooh, that's a good movie, too, huh? Yeah, if, if you want to get into the nitty-gritty of why this movie's good, why this movie's bad, there's yeah. only one straight shooter who's going to lay it all on the line <sighs> for us. So uh, who, who can I trust with that? I'll tell you who we're going to trust. Uh, somebody so trustworthy, the mm. man tried to shut him down. Whoa. Wouldn't let him speak his opinion, took away his First Amendment rights. So he had to start going by a pseudonym. A just so player he de um, what do they so call those? Nom de plume? That's what I said. <laughs> this is a five ninja star review from Nightmare on Elm Street fan, a.k.a. the official Baby Oil and Blow film critic, Ivo Cobra 8. <laughs> Who says, my number one personal favorite Chuck Norris film ever. Badass action film. Best of the best action film of the 80s I ever saw. This is one man army against terrorists. Quote unquote. It is time to die. My oh, girlfriend the, bought me this film on Blu-ray. Oh, I just got it today. Bragging about and what I am format. so happy about it. I'm going to hit the rap horn one anytime he Girlfriend. hits the staples. Also, Blu-ray in Slovenia already? Well, Very he's, impressive. He's quick to lay out what format he has. Chuck Norris is Matt Hunter, and Invasion USA is his best film of all time. Okay. I would put this film with First Blood, Rambo, First Blood, first Part blood, 2, Rambo, Hard Target, 
Die Hard, Die Hard with a Vengeance, The Last Boy Scout, Listen Showdown in Little films. Tokyo, Mad Max Fury Road, Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior, and any other badass action movie. Today's the birthday of, uh, mm. what's the dude that plays Toe Cutter and Emojin Joe? Oh, sure. Australian asshole. Yeah. Today's his birthday. He's dead. Happy birthday, dead guy. Yeah. You don't really get a birthday then if you're dead. I think that's, that's only for living people. I would put this movie above Missing in Action, and this movie just became my number one favorite Chuck Norris movie. Chuck Norris is a badass in this movie with his Uzis. Steven Seagal would not have had a chance against Chuck Norris. Whoa! Chuck Norris works alone, his one-man army. Jay Chataway made a perfect music score for this movie. Yeah. The same he did for Missing in Action. Joseph Zito directed perfectly this action or movie. Friday the 13th Part 4, The Final Chapter, The Prowler, Missing in Action, and Invasion USA are his favorite films of mine. Agreed, yeah. All of his, fav- all of his films are also my favorite films. Of Have you noticed, like, so far, mm. this review's spot on, yeah, mate. he's nailing it. Nailing it. Richard Lynch was excellent and a badass villain bad guy I have ever seen. Mm. Chuck Norris also writes the screenplay for this movie. Yeah. This movie has tons of action, explosions, practical effects. Hunter blows up the bad guy with M72 Law. It's yeah. time. I miss action movies like this. Where are action movies like this one today? Thank you. I want action movies like this one back. As you know, I am action junkie. I love action movies to death. And Invasion USA is a badass action movie ever. I have this movie on Blu-ray in 1080p HD. Oh, shit. R.I.P. Richard Lynch. I miss you. Five ninja stars. Wow. Uh, pretty, uh... One, two, three, four, five. Pretty engaged in brevity. Nightmare on Elm Street yeah. fan this week. It got it all done in like Man. four lengthy paragraphs. Pretty impressive. That Said everything cool. that needed to be said. Got in and out. Fucking left you wanting more. So, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I would have... I, Going into your final thoughts in Ninja Star rating, I would assume you're just a, a ditto, perfect agreement, everything that guy said, five Ninja Stars. I'm not going to beat around the bush. Oh. Now, I'm not going to beat around the bush like fucking Rostov did with that rocket launcher when he was trying to kill the diplomats. I'm just going to tell you, matter of factly, Nate. Uh-huh. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> just, just right on board. Right on board with Nightmare on Elm Street fan. This movie AKI, we'll had... Fucking Chuck Norris. Mm-hmm. It had Chuck Norris beating people up. He could have kicked right. a little more. He could have kicked a little more. A little I guess that could be like one complaint you can make. So if somebody was like, Ugh, four and a half, sure. I'll live with that. Mm-hmm. But he's kicking everybody's ass. He's killing people. This movie just like thoroughly throws out the plot after the first act to just be like, yeah. you said, ah, let's blow some shit up. Mm-hmm. Night, day, doesn't matter. Just blow some shit up. Where's killing going to be? Who cares? Chuck Norris and that girl will figure it out. That's right. Blow more shit up. Kill more people. Everybody's got to die. It's mm-hmm. fucking war. It's an invasion USA. I'd say, oh, maybe you could shave a little more time off this movie. Yeah. Make it an hour and a half. Be easy. Because we like be that. easy to do. It's got titties. It's got explosions. It's got all the stuff we like. Well, you but don't we cut, like an hour and a half. Out. No, 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 no. But it's, I guess there's not any character scenes or anything you can cut out. But that's the thing, exist. Nate. This was clearly a much longer movie until Chuck Norris was like, I know how to make a movie. Give me a fucking writer's we'll just have fucking... just make no sense. Yeah. Cha-ching. Just put get, me in the writer's guild. Get rid of all the story and just put the action in. I would like to have known a little bit more about John Redcorn. What else <sighs> was he doing down in that swamp? This movie's perfect, bro. Wow. This is a five-star banger. I got to say, yeah, we've given Chuck Norris the business, mm-hmm. and uh, we've hit on some good ones say, as of late. We've been tough but fair. Yeah. We've, uh, we've hit some good ones as of late. This one, this is just fucking peak Chuck Norris this here, man. This is, this is He's killing Norris. it. You're getting full Norris in this one. He's fucking just crushing it. There's no weaknesses on his behalf. Mm-hmm. Not That's one. That's true. Yeah. He's, nailed, you, he's doing everything they ask him. You can't blame Norris at all. He's doing everything this. they ask him in this one. You owe him five. All right, giving it full Monty, five ninja stars. Uh, there's there's some different ways you can watch this movie, as it turns out. Um, the there's, best ways, there's, the way I watched it. There's grand fucking action sequences in this movie. 
some of my favorite ever. Some some amazing moments. Yeah. Uh, the blowing up a uh, suburbs with rocket launcher scene. The plowing trucks through an entire shopping mall, shopping mall yeah. scene, et cetera, et cetera. Streets of Atlanta war. The problem with this film is that halfway through, it completely falls apart and stops making sense from right. the scene and just becomes chaos. Where it gets good. So the wrong way to watch this movie is sitting down alone in your living room taking notes on it yeah. for a, for a Dumb podcast uh-huh. you do like an idiot, right? You're watching it like that. This is this is a three fucking ninja star movie right there. You're watching it, uh huh. The group of people, uh huh. The crowded room, yeah. You got some drinks. You're all half paying attention to it. Maybe you're talking about some bullshit uh-huh. while it's on in the background. You got to give this one another full on ninja star. I feel. Don't watch it like an idiot, like I did. Watch oh, it the way okay. I watched it the first time when I really enjoyed it and was like, yeah. "It was a great Chuck Norris." I'm not going five ninja stars because that's crazy. No, I it's think of the movies I've crazy, given true. five ninja stars, and they're the elite. We're talking the yeah. Point Breaks of the world. We're mm-hmm. talking the Die Hard with the Vengeances of the world. Like, I can't put it up there. Yeah, solid four ninja stars is what I'm gonna say for Invasion USA, starring. Chucky N. Mm, mm. From some Chucky B to some Chucky N. I thought he killed it, man. Okay, I'm glad. I'm glad you good. had a good time with it, for it sure. Good. That's, that's, what we're, that's what we're here for. Trying to just have a good time on this podcast. I like that second half when they were just like, ah. <laughs> ah forget about it. Ah. We're done explaining why or how any of this stuff could happen. You've, you've all seen enough movies. We're trying you, to you get it, right? visually uh, let you know who's who and what direction they're shooting in why. It's people shooting guns. You love it. Whoever gets on Chuck Norris's business end is clearly the bad guy. That's all you need to know. Absolutely. And uh, all you need to know. How do you is, not end the month well, on that movie? That's what I need I guess to know. That's that's rough because we got another one. Or maybe are we going to uh, go out with a whimper here since we're doing one more canon <sighs> film? It's the canon canon. Uh, one, one more week of the canon canon. What our could special it be? miniseries. What we're doing, Matt, is we're taking a little bit of a right turn away from Ooh. their straight action shit into them dabbling a little bit into some sci-fi horror as it's going on. We're talking about another film from 1985. Uh-huh. We're talking about blood-sucking naked space vampire ladies. I'm listening to brought you. Brought to us by one of my Mount Rushmore horror movie directors of all time. Whoa. We're talking Toby Hooper's Life Force. Oh, snap. Yeah, be fucking square. I'm the baby Golden oil Globus. and blow. Need you here. Make sure, no matter how you show up, you stay single. It's a long road when you're on your own. And it hurts when they tear your dreams apart.
Okay, everybody, got it down, okay? And that was super, super cold, all right? But got it down. One liter of the Chuck Norris Seaforce Premium Artisan Water, okay? Got it down. So that was another Chuck in the books, okay? So thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And make sure you stay tuned in for more videos, all right? And I'm out. Peace.